This is a presentation of the Oklahoma Sports Network. Any other use of this telecast or any pictures, descriptions, or accounts of the game without the Oklahoma Sports Network's consent is prohibited. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be used without express written consent. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Pribble Stadium, where tonight the Carl Albert Titans 5-2 and two, take on the Bishop McGinnis Fighting Irish 6-0. and oh. Both teams come into this game 3-0 and oh in district play. I'd like to welcome Coach Goff, Tessa Durrell, Tyler Townsend, Keetra Frazier, and I'll be your play-by-play -play voice, Kirk Norman, here this evening as we get prepared for our countdown to kickoff, brought to you by Champion Plumbing. Don't settle for less. Call the champs. Well, Coach Goff and Tessa, uh, we're here, and uh, we're actually in the stands tonight. It's going to be a little bit of a different feel for us. Well, I was, I was telling you earlier, it reminded me of when I used to watch the Cubs all the time, when the Cubs went out into the bleachers. I mean, the, the announcers went out in the bleachers and the Cubs. It was, it, it was so wonderful back then. Yeah. And so I hope we can do that for the fans tonight. Well, I hope so, too. And I, I, I just want to uh, uh, give a warning to our uh, audience this evening that there is – you know, we can't tell what's going to be said around us, but we can definitely <laughs> tell what's going to happen in our microphones. Tessa, you're down on the track. Um, yes. Uh, how are you feeling about this evening? I'm feeling pretty good down here. I'm not going to lie. This setup's a little different than what we're used to. Got a little more of a cramped sideline, so maybe I'll be feeling more of those. Uh, it's going to feel like a home game down here, I guess, with everybody so close. So it'll be interesting. Absolutely. Well, this is our countdown to kickoff. We're going to be back with you with the keys to the game here in just a few moments. We're excited to get this game underway, and uh, we know that you are too. District 5A2, uh, uh, these are the top teams in District 5A2 right now, and they're going to face off here at 7 o'clock, and uh, we're just excited to bring that game to you. So this is your Carl Albert Titan Oklahoma Sports Network. Here at Champion Plumbing, we grew up under these lights, so we know what hard work and dedication really means. Because to us, being the best is about helping our community when they need us most. It's about giving our all on every play and every job. Being your hometown champs means being part of a team that succeeds together. So every time you call, you get nothing but our best. And that's what makes us Champion Plumbing. We're back with you here on your Carl Albert Titan Oklahoma Sports Network, and we have a new sponsor this evening for our keys to the game. Super Subs, home of the Steak Bomb Sandwich, locally owned and operated for over 20 years. 2150 South Douglas Boulevard, call 405-733-5440 for your Super Sub. Coach Goff, have you ever eaten the Super Subs? I have. It's it's a wonderful place. It is. I, I mean, you said Super Subs was our new sponsor, and I yeah. just went, oh, man, that yeah. was so good. I'm telling you. Uh, they are doing a fantastic job over there at Super Subs, and uh, you know if, if you if you've ever coached or been to Carl Albert, I think you've you've eaten at Super Subs. Yes. That's, so uh, incredible place to eat, Tessa. The reason you are you know the shape you are is you didn't spend a lot of time at Super Subs <laughs> like the rest of us. I don't think I've ever been there. Maybe I'll have to go. 
Uh, you'll absolutely have to go try it out with us. Well, our keys to the game this evening, uh, brought to you again by Super Subs, home of the State Bong Sandwich. Uh, keys to the game, uh, Coach Goff, you and I talked about it a little bit on the way over here. Um, I think most of us, uh, or you and I, actually saw the same, uh, uh, a lot of the same video on this crew. But, um, uh, again, keys for us. Uh, I'm a line guy, so I'm really watching the line a lot. Uh, you're a defensive guy. If we can win the line of scrimmage, you know, last week, and I know it was southeast, but last week we, we dominated the line of scrimmage both defensively and offensively. And um, I have to say, after watching film of Bishop McGinnis, and I, I have never said this about Bishop McGinnis in regard to um, uh, any time that I've carried a game or been on the sidelines during a game, but I believe that their offensive line is what I would call unremarkable. Well, I agree. I, agree. Um, I saw the same thing that you did. Um, they're just, you know, and they may play out of their minds tonight, but I, I thought they were just kind of average. Yep. They're just kind of average. Yeah. I think that's that's a good way of putting it. So, our, if our defensive line can take advantage of that offensive line and, uh, you know, keep the quarterback moving, uh, River Warren, if we can keep him running, you talked about that uh, yeah. in on the way over here. Uh, he's, uh, he's not necessarily a running back. He likes to throw. He kind of likes to stand still and throw. And uh, if you can make him move. As they say, he's a pocket passer. There you go. And if we can either collapse the pocket or make him move to throw the ball, if he sits back there and just has time after time after time, as somebody we saw this last week uh, <laughs> did, uh, then, yeah. then uh, it, it could be a long night for the Titans. But if we get him moving, uh, he's um, – not as good. That's one of the things that I put in there was that River Warren will throw it away, and I believe that. I believe we have the defensive backs that can take advantage of that and make that happen, so that's a, a big key for me as well. Um, uh, one of the things that uh, you and I talked about as well on the way over here, there's a young man playing, uh, and a matter of fact, uh, he is a senior this year, and uh, so what that means to me, his last name is Taffy, and it seems like to me there's been a Taffy playing at Bishop McGinnis for about seven or eight years. And uh, they're always very elusive, and they're great in space. They're, they're very good athletes. Absolutely. Just, and they, like you said, they're very elusive in space, and he's just like the rest of them. Absolutely. So if we can keep our eye on Taffy and, uh, and take care of him, uh, that's another key to the game that I think that uh, we can go with. Tessa, what are you thinking about this evening? Uh, of course, like every game, one of the keys of things like penalties and all the controllables that Carl usually needs to take control of, especially in games like this where it could be close. Then my next biggest key is containing Taffy, as you said. I think you've got to be quick on the deep line there to make sure he doesn't have that space to work with and please shut him down. All right. So, Tessa, thank you, and uh, Coach Goff, thank you. Um, one of the things that uh, we say every time, Coach Goff, we're, we're, gonna, we're getting to you. <laughs> one of the things that we say every time, and, and it's kind of a duh statement, but it is always a key to every game, and that is no turnovers, forget the flag, and be in the dogfight. Exactly. Uh, so, Coach Goff, what have you got for keys well, to the I've game? Well, I've got one more, uh, actually two. Uh, I think their best receiver is number two, and I, his name is uh, Tyrell Bruner. He's a senior, 5'10", 145, and that, he can move. He catches the ball really well, and once he gets the ball, he's like a rabbit. He's, yeah. he's very hard to, to, to get a hold of. Another thing I noticed is against uh, Guthrie, they brought in number 13, who is number who is Atticus Richards, All right. uh, 6'1", 165, they list him as a running back, defensive back, um, and they brought him in in a wildcat situation. Um, and he did just the opposite of what he probably should have done, but I think it's instinctive for him. They were running counter away from him, and he acted like he was going to the counter and then went back the back, back door and scored a touchdown and right. had a big run. So it, it, we need to be able to recognize when 13's at quarterback – in the Wildcat set. And I'm sure Coach Herbert has got something planned for that. Ready for that to go. All right, one of the things that I noticed and uh, just in regard to putting in the names and, and things for our uh, starting lineups, so they actually, on, on our sheet that we've been given, they start one, uh, they actually start two juniors 
and everybody else is seniors on this offensive side. I hadn't noticed that. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And then and then on the defensive side, you've got two juniors and a sophomore, and everybody else is a senior. Well, that's so, amazing. It, yeah, it really is uh, when you can when you can line that that up. Uh, we'll talk about it a little bit later because I know that there are some things that uh, we can share out of your history. Uh, this has been a big game every single year oh, uh, for the <laughs> for Bishop McGinnis and Carl Albert, and it usually comes down to these two. And uh, so we'll ha- we'll be back in just a few moments on your Carl Albert Titan Oklahoma Sports Network. Augusta Contracting is a general contracting company that specializes in commercial and industrial construction projects. When you choose us as a partner for a project, we assure quality workmanship, exceptional performance, and unparalleled client satisfaction. At Augusta Contracting, safety is top priority. Our main focus is to send our team home to their families safe, happy, and healthy. Augusta Contracting, where your idea turns to reality and your project comes to life. When I'm flying, I put my helmet on, my visor down, my mask up. You don't know who I am, whether I'm African American, Asian American, Hispanic, white, male or female. You just know I'm an American Airman, kicking your butt. I'm General C.Q. Brown, Jr. Come join us. This is Friday Night Football on the Oklahoma Sports Network. Good evening from Pribble Stadium here in northwest Oklahoma City where the Carl Albert Titans are taking on the Bishop McGinnis Irish. Um, uh, Coach Goff, uh, my family and I were at uh, dinner. We had an early dinner and... uh, uh, we were sitting across the table. Both of my kids graduated from Carl Albert. Uh, actually, all five of our kids graduated from Carl Albert. And, uh, but I was sitting across the table with two of my kids, and uh, one of the things that, uh, uh, that they uh, wanted me to reiterate and, and iterate this evening uh, on the Oklahoma Sports Network is the fact that Carl Albert, there's no love loss between Carl Albert and Bishop McGinnis. No, I don't believe there is. Um, it's like it, if Carl Albert has a rival, it might be Guthrie. Yes. But second in that rivalry deal is McGinnis. Right. And McGinnis fields a good team. Uh, you know, I had the stats when we uh, kept coming up against them um, in state, you know, in the yep. state finals. And uh, McGinnis has never beaten Carl Albert in the state final. Um, there Hallelujah. Have been, yeah, that's right. <laughs> there have been several games uh, that have been uh, down to the – you know, very last second. I can remember a game here even uh, when we yeah. won the title uh, in 16. Uh, they beat us right here. Right down there. Right down there <laughs> uh, on the south end of the field. Yep. And uh, I think that the film will bear out that we scored, but that's not what happened. Well, that's not what happened. <laughs> that's not what those guys in those hats that's, and striped that's, shirts That's said. exactly right. And so uh, we came back. We actually met them in the state championship again that's in right. 16 and won. And so – uh, the the matchup between Carl Albert and Bishop McGinnis has gone on for years and years, and it's always good quality football. One of the things that I think goes along with that is good quality coaching. Exactly. Uh, these kids, uh, you know, we're we're coming into the gauntlet, and that's mm-hmm. Bishop McGinnis, Guthrie, and then Piedmont. And uh, as as you come into that, you recognize uh, those teams are extremely well coached and they are disciplined, and uh, that's you know that's just a a good sign of a good team. I also think that uh, there is a mutual respect Absolutely. among the coaches. Absolutely. Um, again, probably the m- most heated rivalry with Carl Albert for Carl Albert is with Guthrie, and we had the most respect for their coaches. Same thing with McGinnis. We had utmost respect for all their coaches. Um, I don't know much about Piedmont, so I yeah. won't say anything about them. <laughs> okay. Well, and, and, you know, Piedmont really has uh, just come on in the last – 
about four to five years yeah, and that, really that's true. Uh, really been a, a powerhouse in 5A2. So here we are this evening. Uh, the sun is beginning to set over the horizon, and we're kind of thankful for that because we're looking straight into it. And uh, we're excited to have and host this game for you this evening on the Carl Albert Titan Oklahoma Sports Network. We'll be back in just a moment. Coast Technology Group is your full IT managed service provider, utilizing simple, reliable technology for your home and business. Remote monitoring and management, network infrastructure, and cybersecurity, all with 24-7, 365 day live support. When you partner with CTG, you get the 150 years combined experience of our experts, helping your business grow while keeping your systems secure. We come from different backgrounds with diverse interests and unique learning styles. Finding classes that fit your individual needs isn't a challenge at Cameron University. A small campus and dedicated faculty ensures there's always someone close by to guide you on your journey. Your success is our success. Your education is our mission. At Cameron University, you're not a number, you're part of the family. We fight the battles no one hears about. We drop into the middle of firefights to rescue others. And act as one-man air traffic control towers. We're the ones who go before all others. Join the fight. We're back with you here. It's a beautiful sunset. You can see that in your you know, screen this evening. The sky is clear. Uh, Coach Goff, you talked about the wind letting down just a little bit. Yeah. It's it's still blowing a little bit out of the south southeast, um, but uh, I think it is coming down. It's definitely coming down from where we yeah. got here when we first got here. Yeah. So our starting lineups starting lineups are brought to you by Triple Elite. Find world class designs and hot new styles at Triple Elite. Our starting lineups this evening for the Carl Albert defensive starters, number 52, Brock Johnson, number 77, Emerson Williams, number 85, Caleb Cornell. We're going to tell you a little bit more about him later. Number 15, Caden Davis, number 20, Caden Longstreet, number 22, Cody Longstreet, number 10, Easton Harless, number 7, Trey Washington, number 5, Tayshawn James, Number 12, Jacquery Carter, and number 6, Tristan Haynes. And now for your Irish defense, at cornerback, Brennan Chumo, number 10. At free safety, Kellen Frail, number 20. At cornerback, J.P. Spainer, number 7. At strong safety, Noah Rice, number 5. At linebacker, Kazen Bird, number 30. At linebacker, Zane Shadid, number 9. At the wheel safety position, Jack Foster, number four. At defensive end, Zach Taywater, number 88. At uh, defensive tackle, Drew Shansom, number 55. At nose guard, Vincent Shores, number 74. And at defensive end, Graham Nichols, number 44. For your Carl Albert offensive starters, number 60, Tanner Norman. Number 72, Gary Ray. Number 51, Trayton Holland. Number 50, Easton Collier. Number 52, Brock Johnson. At quarterback starting this evening, number three, Cash Ferris. At running back, number 21, Xavier Robinson. At wide out, number seven, Trey Washington. Wide out, number five, Tayshawn James. And wide out, Tristan Haynes, number six. And at your tight end is number 85, Caleb Cornell. Now for your Irish starters at left tackle. Down in the deep uh, on the line, Brody Smith, number 50. Left guard, Connor Resetter, number 68. 
At center, MJ Darby, number 65. At right guard, Hampson Wright, number 54. At right tackle, Brant Hag, number 75. At wide receiver, Atticus Richards, number 13. At wide receiver, Tyrell Bruner, number two. At tight end, Noah Rice, number five. The other tight end, Brett Jacobs, number 33. At the running back position is Michael Taff, Taffy. And at quarterback is number six, River Warren. All right, so those are your starting lineups brought to you by Triple Elite. Find world-class designs and hot new styles at Triple Elite. And so, Tessa, you uh, uh, were talking uh, just a little bit off the air. What were you going to share with us? I was just saying this will be my first time here with Carl Albert this season that uh, Reed Quasi is available for the Carl Albert Titans offense. So I'm excited to see uh, maybe how they use them tonight and how that adds some versatility to the offense too. Absolutely. Uh, you know, Reed is uh, just a – He's an incredible athlete. He's a great athlete. And so when he's on the field, you can't ignore him. And that that's one of the things I think they could possibly use this yeah. week. Yeah. yeah. Decoy type. Absolutely. If if he's not full full go. Yeah. We know that he did play last week in a very limited way at the end of the game toward uh, over mm -hmm. at Southeast and uh, basically was kind of a handoff right, handoff left kind of guy, but uh, you know, uh, took him down, scored a touchdown, and uh, so we're excited to see Reed back into the game. We're going to be coming back with you here in just a few moments. We will have uh, the coin toss that is coming up. And um, just a reminder, your countdown to kickoff is brought to you by Champion Plumbing. Don't settle for less. Call the champs. We'll be back with you here in a moment on your Carl Albert Titan Oklahoma Sports Network. We fight the battles no one hears about. We drop into the middle of firefights to rescue others. And act as one-man air traffic control towers. We're the ones who go before all others. Join the fight. Here at Champion Plumbing, we take pride in taking care of our community. When we hit the road, we're fully prepared to solve your plumbing issues. We're family owned, and we are the standard for plumbing service. With a team full of champions, being the best plumbers in Oklahoma is just part of the job. So when we show up, you can rest easy, knowing that whatever the issue may be, we can handle it and make you a happy Champion customer. Contact Champion Plumbing today. This is Friday Night Football on the Oklahoma Sports Network. We're back with you here on your Carl Albert Titan Oklahoma Sports Network, and the sun has finally set, and uh, it's almost time for game time. 6.53, seven minutes. Uh, actually, they've got 11 minutes on the clock, and so we're going to be running over a little bit. Mm -hmm. I can see the referee coming over right now to possibly head to the locker room to pick up the captains for the game and so we're going to be running a little bit later uh coach goff um as you uh, have spent many many hours uh studying bishop mcginnis and and your history with uh with this football game uh can you remember uh particular events that stand out from uh being here on this field or being on our field against the fighting irish no well I, not just specific things other than what you were talking about earlier the 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 play that down on the goal line mm -hmm. that was really, in my mind, very controversial, but it wasn't controversial to that official over on the other <laughs> no, side. It, no, it wasn't. Um, but I, all I, what I remember most about Bishop McGinnis is how well, again, you said, mm -hmm. well coached they are and how they, have, how they take advantage of whatever they do. They do it very well. Mm -hmm. It might be a quarterback run. It might be a quarterback throw. It might be a defensive stud or whatever, but they do a very good job with their kids all right well I, I i agree and i know that we have the kind of coaching staff that does a very good job with our kids and uh, uh we're in for a treat this evening 
as we have the opportunity to watch two teams, uh, both undefeated in district play and uh, coming together um, for uh, kind of the battle. Uh, this could very well be the battle of 5A2, and we don't know what next week. We're not going to look ahead to next week. We're going to play tonight's game, but uh, but this is the top of, of District 2. So we're going to take uh, a break, and we're going to be back with you here in just a moment on your Carl Albert Titan Oklahoma Sports Network. When it comes to your home, you need someone that you can trust to keep it safe and protected for you and your family. Vesta Foundation Solutions is your local, family-owned company that has helped many homeowners fix and protect their homes. Our engineered solutions can take care of all of your foundation repair, basement waterproofing, concrete leveling, and dirt crawl space repair needs. We take pride in getting the job done right, and you'll always be protected with up to a 75-year warranty. Contact us today for a free estimate. Sidelined by surgery, illness, injury? Valor Physical Therapy can help. At Valor PT, our skilled therapists create a rehabilitation program individualized for you with education and encouragement each step of the way. Whether it's sports or the activities of life, let Valor get you back in the game. Start now at 405-265-6449. No referral needed. Mention Oklahoma Sports Network and get a free t-shirt at your first appointment. Work with our team's engineers to design the right system for your conference rooms. Video telecommunications, stadiums, auditoriums, video walls, home theater, and automation. Whether your next project is large or small, let our team with over 150 years of combined experience help design the right system with simple, reliable technology. Here at Champion Plumbing, we grew up under these lights, so we know what hard work and dedication really means. Because to us, being the best is about helping our community when they need us most. It's about giving our all on every play and every job. Being your hometown champs means being part of a team that succeeds together. So every time you call, you get nothing but our best. And that's what makes us champ. Augusta Contracting is a general contracting company that specializes in commercial and industrial construction projects. When you choose us as a partner for a project, we assure quality workmanship, exceptional performance, and unparalleled client satisfaction. At Augusta Contracting, safety is top priority. Our main focus is to send our team home to their families safe, happy, and healthy. Augusta Contracting, where your idea turns to reality and your project comes to life. We just enjoyed the national anthem sung by a student here at um, Conley Field, Pribble Stadium, uh, at the Bishop McGinnis uh, High School. Um, Bishop McGinnis has a long history of good athletics um, along with Carl Albert, and I definitely believe that that's where a lot of our uh, adversarial roles come from as we, we meet them in several different things. Um, so uh, we are getting ready for the coin toss. This is still a part of your countdown to kickoff brought to you by Champion Plumbing. Don't settle for less. Call the champs. Our coin toss this evening is brought to you by the Game Lounge, where tabletop gaming and community meet, located at 351 North Air Depot Boulevard, Suite M. Call 405-760-7164. Coach Goff, you've got those numbers there in front of you, but uh, there are several uh, players that are coming out this mm -hmm. evening uh, for the Bishop McGinnis Fighting Irish as their uh, captains. Noah Rice, number five. Number 30 is Kazan Bird. Number 54, 54 is, is Harrison Wright. And then number 20. Number 20 is Kellen Frail. 
or Fraley. Mm -hmm. 55 is Drew uh, Chensom. And then number 68 there on the left and is Connor Resitar. That's right. Six foot, 200 senior, 200 uh, pound senior. So they are ready. Here comes the Carl Albert uh, captains. Number four is Reed DeQuazy. Um, number 85 is Caleb Cornell. Number five is Tayshawn James. And number 21 is Xavier Robinson coming out for the coin toss this evening. The coin toss, again, brought to you by the Game Lounge, <coughs> where tabletop gaming and community meet, located at 351 North Air Depot Boulevard, Suite M. Call 405 760 7164. And one of the things we're going to talk about a little bit this evening is number 85 that's going on to the field right now. He's walking on there with a playing cast. So, yeah, and it, it, it'll, the officials would have had to have checked that, and it has to be uh, wrapped with foam of some type, mm -hmm. and it has to be at least an inch thick, so he can't just, you know, quail. It, it's, it's good for him. <laughs> right. Uh, and they have moved his position a little bit. He's, yes. He's normally a defensive end. Uh, he'll be playing three technique tonight. He's also the deep snapper, and those uh, duties have gone to Easton Harless. All right. So when you say three technique, mm -hmm. um, uh, give us a little idea of what the three technique is. Well, the three technique will always line up outside eye to outside shoulder of the guard, whichever he'll be on the strong side. Right. Um, matter of fact, Easton's the one that, that sets the front. Uh, he's the Sam linebacker, and Sam will, will tell the front which way to go, either right right or left left, um, and he'll be the, the – the three technique, he's, it's a gap control defense, so he'll be in the, the B gap, which is between the guard and the tackle. All right. Carl Albert did win the toss. Thank you, Coach Goff, for that explanation. <laughs> um, and, and seriously. Maybe I ought to do that more often because I, we hadn't won a toss all year. Ab <laughs> absolutely. We ought to have terms of football really? by Coach Goff at the <laughs> coin toss. Really. Carl Albert did win the toss. They have deferred to the second half, and they will be defending the south end zone. I wonder how and that happened. Bishop, <laughs> Bishop McInnes will be defending the north end zone. Well, the reason I say that is how did that happen is because we – we deferred, so we're going to get the ball in the second half. They get the choice of where they want the ball. Exactly. I mean, they're going to take the ball. Well, maybe that's the way it is. Maybe. They take the ball, and we get a choice of where we're going to kick it from. Yeah, that's, that could that be. That was it. Yes. So, uh, anyway, one of the things that I uh, – the reason I say that is because I have, I have used those terms at home, and my daughter said, Dad – I don't know what that, that doesn't is. Mean a thing. That doesn't mean a thing to me. Well, so. I, can, I can do that <laughs> as many times as you want. Because Absolutely. <laughs> well, because there's a lot of people that are at home this evening, and they're wanting to know, and, and we say uh, uh, a shade or a three a shade or a yeah. five. Or right. A, yeah, I, I can. And it, we used to do, and I, you knew this, we used to do a, uh, uh, for moms, we did oh coaching one on one for yes. moms, mm -hmm. football one on one for moms. Right. That's what it was. Coach Rose initiated that, mm -hmm. and we would go through all the techniques, and we would we would <laughs> right. take the moms and put them in the positions where their kids were. Yep. It was wonderful. I don't know whether Mike still does that or not. I'm assuming he is. I I think they do. You did mention uh, Cody as being a starter, but Cody is in a boot right That's now. That's right. Cody is in a boot, and his brother, who is his twin, who is his twin, by the way. Okay. <laughs> Uh, just in a different grade, which is fine. You're fine. You, you can stand up. Carl Albert is taking the field. And uh, along there with the Titan flag runners and the warrior flag. But um, anyway, Cody is in a boot. Uh, he yeah. twisted his ankle pretty bad last week, and I think it was the same ankle he messed up last year. Okay. So Caden is going to be playing in his place this evening. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Well, as the smoke moves past, it looks like we're going to be covered up here, and now they've got green smoke going the opposite direction. So, <laughs> yeah. At least it's on the other side of the field. Yeah. I, I hope that means that this is a, a good landing zone. Um, so, there's a little bit of... Uh, it does have an odor. Yeah, it does. Smells like a lot of fireworks just happened, but yeah. nothing nothing went off. So It's still going on right down here right by me. <laughs> is it? <laughs> oh, good. That's, uh, I'm glad you're, you're yeah. soaking it all up for us. Right. Breathe deeper, will you? So. You know, we, you were mentioning earlier about how senior laden uh, McGinnis is, mm -hmm. and our guys aren't senior laden. Absolutely, they are which not. Which is uh, a testament to our kids i have a reason i have a reason i think that the reason one of the reasons mcginnis is is six and oh is because 
they have so many seniors. Absolutely. They have a lot of experience. And, you know, you might not be the best player, uh, and, and you can tell me if I'm wrong because you were on the sidelines way more than I ever thought about being, but um, you might not be the best player, but when you've been in a system for four years, you know the system and you know what's expected. Exactly. And it that's makes exactly, a lot of difference. That's exactly right. Um, and they, I, I, I was looking at their defense and their offense this last week in scouting, mm-hmm. and they didn't change dimes worth since we were, since I was coaching. Exactly. I mean, it's the same defense. Right. And I was talking to Coach Madden earlier. I said, he said something about, you know, we need to make sure we get them blocked and all that stuff. I said, Coach, you know where they're going to be. He goes, yeah, that's true. That's right. He said they haven't changed in years. That's so right. If they come out in a five or, a, or an odd front or something like that, then they'll blow our minds. Well, we are about ready for the kickoff. Kickoff is brought to you by CrossFit Complete, a community dedicated to the daily pursuit of fitness excellence and serving others. We strive to give our members the best hour of their day. Contact CrossFit Complete at CrossFitComplete.com. Well, we are getting ready for the kickoff. The excitement is in the air. You know, Friday night, this is fall break, but you wouldn't know it uh, in regard to the students that are here, the band is here, uh, the stands are filled on this side, the stands are finally filling on the opposite side, and uh, it's football Friday night. It is. And there's nothing any better. Well, and a lot of people played last night. That's right. Uh, it was, it, again, at fall break, and they decided that they would, a lot of teams play on Thursday night. Carl Albert and McGinnis decided they'd play on play tonight. Your first quarter sponsor is Ben Osinga Insurance. For your life and home insurance needs, call Ben at 405-733-4400. Pooch kick down the middle. He's been touched by a Bishop oh, McGinnis fighting iron. Hit him. And he gets he's down right there at the 20-yard line. He's lucky. Absolutely he's lucky. He's real fortunate. All right. So Bishop McGinnis is going to have their first possession of the evening, and they are starting at the 20-yard line. Um, for the defense, uh, Brock Johnson is the defensive end. Emerson Williams, tackle. Um, Caleb Cornell, and which we talked about earlier, and then Caden Davis up front. Although it looks like number 70, Tyson Wilkerson is playing the shade. River which, Warren is in at quarterback. Number two's in motion. There's going to be a handoff right there in the middle, and he's going to push up for about three yards, and that's all she wrote. I believe that was Balicki, number three, uh, with the run there. So it gets to the 23. He's going to be second and seven. It'll be interesting to see how well we hold up up front uh, with uh, – our defensive line and against their offensive line. That's right. We I wanna, was noticing they don't have very big splits. No. that That's a telling thing in itself. River Warren takes the snap. He hands it off again. Player right there in the middle. He's going to pick up three more yards. That was number one running the ball that time. That's Michael Taffy coming out of the running back position. So he's, he gets up to the 26. Is going to be third down and four. He's a little bigger than his, his brothers were. Yep. He's six, six foot, 215. His brothers were a little bit smaller. Third down and four. I don't think he's 215, Coach. No, I don't think he is either. <laughs> one now one now wide receiver to him. the left, two in the backfield. Warren looks to the sidelines. He's going to go up and move up to the line. Nine seconds left on the play clock. He drops back. Running backs move around. Warren takes the snap. He's going to go to that right side. That's number one. And he's going to pick up the first down and about yep. five or six more. He's going to move the ball up to the 38-yard line, and that's a McGinnis first down. I have mentioned to you all on, on the broadcast before that uh, there's a sniffer back or there's a, a lead back. Well, yes. their, their sniffer back or lead back, whatever you want to call him, is number 33. Uh, his, num- his name is Brent Jacobs, and he's a good, I, I think, wherever he goes. You'll see the play go most of the time. He's in a slot position right now, or short slot is what we would call it. One man split to the left, hand off to Taffy. Taffy looks, he goes to the inside, and he is brought down for about a three-yard gain. Goes from the 38 up to the 41, and they're moving quickly. Well, and moving quickly keeps your defense in base defense. Going to be a pass out there to Taffy. Boom! Easton Harless with the smack. Loss on the play. 
Easton, need, Easton needed that. That's good. Absolutely. Great hit there by Harless. Takes the ball back to the 39-yard line. Sometimes going quick is good. <laughs> Sometimes it's not. <laughs> Sometimes it's not. <laughs> Two wideouts to the left, one to the right. River Warren looking for the play. Is it third and long? Third and nine. Third and nine. So River Warren is going to drop back to pass this time. He's got time right across the middle. He hits number two. And he is down there inside Titan territory at the 49-yard line and a first down for McGinnis. He has a favorite receiver, and two is it. That's Bruner. You were talking about him in the pregame. Yeah. He's, he's got very good hands, and he just, bless his heart, he's really good. He's wide open right across the middle there in that yeah. crossing pattern. River Warren, the quarterback, one man split to the left, one man to the right. Warren's going to hand off right there in the middle of number seven. He's got some running room. Oh, You've tackle. got to wrap up. You cannot just hit and walk away. There is a flag in the backfield, and he's going to take it all the way in for the touchdown, but the white man is saying no, no, no. Bring it back here. <laughs> the man in the white hat is what he meant to say. That's right. That's what I meant to say. <laughs> Somebody came up and smacked him, but he just bounced off of him. Right. There's a holding call there. So that ball is going to be moved back 10 yards back to the 41. I was trying to see who that was that came up and smacked him, but I, we don't have replay right now, so I don't know. Stop some of that momentum right there. Absolutely. So here we are back uh, to the 41-yard line in Irish territory. And it's going to bring up first and 20 for the Irish. Now this is where we talked about in the pregame. If we can get some pressure on him and make him move, that would be beneficial to us in many ways. River Warren is in the backfield. He drops back. He's going to hand it off oh. there. A little delay. Back to Taffy. And he gets pulled down from behind there. He gets brought down by uh, number 20. That's Caden. That's Caden Longstreet. So he picks up five yards on the play, takes it from the 41 up to the 46, second down and 15. Second down and about 16. River Warren still in at quarterback, two to the left, two to the right. Okay, hey, you all may not notice this, but River Warren will, will do two claps, one, and they, they've done this forever. One clap just kind of to see if you'll jump off sides. The second clap will be what they go on. Taffy is in at running back. Warren takes the snap. He's dropping back to pass. He throws it out to the right. He's got a man wide open at the edge. That's number two again. And that is Bruner with the catch. And he is defended there uh, by Chancey Lester. And that's going to move the ball for a third down and eight. The ball is going to be in Titan territory there at the 47. Again, he tries to he tries to draw you off sides with the first clap. And then he's going to look and see what you're doing. Two men to the right, two men to the left. Warren steps back. He's got some time. He throws across here to this inside. And the ball is caught for a first down. The ball is going to be down at the 34-yard line. Atticus Richards was the recipient number 13. Again, it's an end cut. Um, I would say it was. It looked like almost like a Cadillac route, but he didn't go all the way across. And I'll tell you what a Cadillac route is. All right. At Taffy's in the backfield. Going to be a handoff to Taffy right up the middle. He pounds forward for about three yards, and then he's going to be taken down there from the 34 down to just inside the 30 at the 29. So about five yards picked up on the play, second and five. Well, Chansey's coming off. Yeah, Chansey came off. Cornell came off. We've got uh, Cooper Brackage going in. Come on, Bratch. Two men in the backfield. One man split white, right. One man's in motion from left to right. Warren takes the ball. He's going to hand it off to Taffy. They're going that way. They've got blockers. He is caught right at the line of scrimmage. Pickup of about two 
from the 29 down to about the 26. So three yards on the carry. And that brings up third and two. Got number three in the backfield now. No, that's number nine actually in the backfield. Warren steps up. Two men split to the left, one to the right. Warren takes the ball, hands off to number nine. He gets through the hole and picks up the first down, gets down to the 15-yard line. Actually to the 20, so six yards picked up on the play and another first down. This is the fourth first down of this drive, which started at the beginning of the game, 11:56, And so it's 6.05 right now. Tackle. A handoff right there in the backfield. He's brought down for a loss. Good job there by Easton Harless. And James Reed in on the tackle. That'll be a loss back to the 23-yard line. Brings up second down and 13. One of the reasons that they're getting their, their end cuts wide open is their run fake. River Warren hands off to the left. Taffy's right up the middle. He pounds forward, and uh, he's going to pick up about seven on the play. That's going to move the ball down to about the 12-yard line. Actually, 10 more. Moves it down to the 13. Going to be a handoff again to Taffy. He's going to go across the middle and get hit right there. Maybe picks up a yard, continues to roll, but they're going to place him down there at the 10-yard line. So three yards picked up. They're going to look, and they give it to him as a first down. So it's first and goal at the 10. This has just been basically a running drive. I mean, uh, they've, they've bailed themselves out on a couple of great passes. Hand off to Taffy, and he's going to get hit right there at the line of scrimmage. Picks up maybe one to the nine. They've run the same play three times in a row. It's just an off-tackle play where they get a, a guard pulled, and he's leading up in the hole. Second and goal at the nine-yard line. With the lead blocker, that's 33. He's leading wherever the play's going, 33's going. So far. Well, 33 is on the left side right now. Taffy is in there at running back. River Warren takes the ball. He's going to lean back. He's looking, get looking. Get he's get he's get on the move. Oh, dang it. He's going to throw over here to the inside, outside on the left, and he hits his receiver. You, you called it number five for the touchdown. Noah Rice. Is Noah Rice. Noah Rice. Well, to give you an idea of what that looks like, they started at the 23, and that was a 17-play drive. 18 if you count the uh, the penalty. That was a whole lot of taffy is what we saw there. Yeah. The ball is down, almost blocked. The kick is up, and it is good. And so Bishop McGinnis strikes first, 7-0. to zero. We'll be back with you here in just a moment on your Carl Albert Titan Oklahoma Sports Network. Back with you here on your Carl Albert Titan Oklahoma Sports Network where the Bishop McGinnis Irish just went 77 yards, 17 plays, and they basically took up most of the first quarter, 7 minutes and 48 seconds, and capped off there by a 9-yard touchdown pass from River Warren. And so they are lined up for kickoff. Kickoff is brought to you by CrossFit Complete, a community dedicated to the daily pursuit of fitness excellence and serving others. We strive to give our members the best hour of their day. Contact CrossFit Complete. One of our keys to the game was being able to get River off his mark. Absolutely. We didn't do that. No. 
That's that ball is going to go out of bounds. And that will be uh, – oh, wait a minute. I guess they're going to put it at the 20. I thought it was out of bounds because it went well out over here. Carl Iver is going to have their first possession. Four minutes and 22 seconds left here in the first quarter. Again, your first quarter sponsor is Ben Osinga Insurance. Call Ben at 405-733-4400. Cash Ferris is in at quarterback. Of course, I never want to dispute what an official said, but that ball looked like it was way out of bounds before it hit the end zone. Absolutely. <laughs> Ferris takes the ball. He's going to hand off there to Xavier Robinson. He's going to get across the left side. He's going to continue to pound forward. He's going to pick up about maybe two yards on the play. You see where they place the ball. They're going to place the ball at the four-yard line, so he picks up four to the 24. That's second down and six. McGinnis is in their traditional 4-2-5 uh, where they have a, a monster and a rover type looking people, which is a weak safety and a strong safety, uh, two corners and a free safety. Um, they play that really well. Xavier Robinson moves out to the left side. He's in motion again, coming to the right side. It's an empty backfield. They've got a stack set to the right and a man in motion left to right coming across the formation. Ferris is going to throw out here just off the hands of Tayshawn James. Let him just a little too much. Just a little too much, and that's going to bring up third down and seven, a long six from the 24-yard line. They kind of had that set up, but uh, just could not uh, get it into his hands. Trey Washington, Tayshawn James to the right, Tristan Haynes to the left, Xavier Robinson in the backfield, Cash Ferris in a quarterback. Ferris takes the snap. He drops back to pass. He's looking downfield. He catches a man right across the middle, and that is a great catch there for the first down. And that's number 16. Reed. That's Reed. Yeah. Yeah. Way to go, buddy. So he goes from the 24 up to the 34. Ten yards picked up on the play. It's first and ten for your Carl Albert Titans. As we told you earlier, Caleb Cornell has a cast on his left hand. And I saw that tight end catch the ball, and I thought, oh, my gosh. He yeah. catches the ball with a cast on, but it wasn't him. Well, he's in there now. Caleb yeah. Cornell's in there. Yeah, he's in there for blocking purposes. He yep. won't be catching anything tonight. Xavier Robinson in the backfield. One man split out to the left. This time it's a direct snap over there, and that's to uh, Tayshawn James. And Tayshawn's going to get across the line of scrimmage from the 34 out to about the 38-yard line. They've got a... McGinnis has a free safety, number 20. His name is uh, Kalen, Kalen Frail, or Fraley. He's six foot 195, and he's a good safety, y'all. He got downhill right then and, and hit Tayshawn, and it's, it kind of reminds you of Tayshawn hitting somebody else. Yeah. Tristan Haynes and Tayshawn James split out to the left side. Robinson in the backfield. Give me a handoff to Robinson going across the left. He's got a little bit of running room. He's out across the 40, 45. He gets to midfield, cuts back up, gets into the 45 and down to the 42-yard line. No flags. Thank no goodness. flags. Good run there. Really good run. He just has to hit the corner and just turn it on. They place that ball on the 43-yard line, first and 10 for your Carl Albert Titans. We are in Irish territory. As we said for Taffy, that same rule applies. You can't give space to Xavier Robinson there or else he's going to take it and go with it. That's right. Thank you, Tessa. Trey Washington to the left. Going to be a handoff to Xavier Robinson. He's going to cut up the middle. He's got another six or seven. Ball is going to be placed down at the 36-yard line. That's going to be second down and about a long three. I was watching the interior that time, and Tanner Norman blocked down, and it blessed that kid's heart that he was blocking because he drove him into the ground and was still pushing on him when the play was about over. Bless that kid's heart. Way to go, Tanner. <laughs> Two men split to the right. Robinson in the backfield. Turns around, hands off to Robinson across this right side. He's looking. He cuts back in, and he gets thrown down, but it's enough for the first down at the 31-yard line. So five more yards picked up on the play. First and 10, Carl Albert. 
Tackle by number 30, Kazen Bird. Uh, I think you told me he's a transfer from yeah. somewhere. He's transferred from Southmore. Southmore. Uh, was one of the leading tacklers in 6A last year. Transferred over here. And, of course, when you transfer into a uh, private school, you can play immediately. <laughs> That's true. That, it is true. That's just the truth. Got Trey Washington to the left. Tristan Haynes to the right. Oh. It's going to be a fade down there to Tristan Haynes. Tristan looks up. It looks like uh, there was some contact there. And there is a flag on the field. We're going to see what he calls here. I imagine he'll call holding on them. Well, that's what we want. They've got a pass interference is what he's first showing. Let's see if uh, on who he says it's on. I think it was on him, on number seven. Pass interference against Bishop McGinnis. Right. That's going to push him on down the field. So that ball will go from the 31. And it's going to be moved all the way down to the 16-yard line. All right, let's take it and go score. We are in the red zone. The red zone is brought to you by Dynamite Driving LLC. We're dedicated to providing you a quality education and experience in order to best prepare you for success. Call 405-467-9121. Trips to the left. Robinson in the backfield. It's going to be a pass in the middle right there to uh, Tayshawn James. Tayshawn James. <laughs> Oh, and there's a flag coming there's in flag. late. There's a flag coming in very late from the referee. And we're going to see what he has to say. Oh, Tayshawn's, bless his heart. Tayshawn's kind of uh, gimped there on the left shoulder. Yeah. See what the referee says. His dead ball, personal foul against Carl Albert. And that's going to move us back. Well, we can't have that. And, that, you know, that was one of our keys. That's exactly uh, right. Not having, you know, big personal foul penalties. So the ball is moved back to the 25-yard line where it's second down and about 19 to go. And it's fortunate that, you know, they in college and in pros, they call the number of the kid. Yes. And I didn't see who it was, and I wouldn't say who it was. Um, Trips to the right. Xavier Robinson in the backfield. Going to be a pitch out here to Robinson. They block off the How corner. How are you? Xavier Robinson. <laughs> That's right. Xavier Robinson is going to get about uh, seven yards on the carry. They're moving that ball to the 19-yard line. So that was just six yards on the carry. Brings up third down and 13. Ladies and gentlemen, since we're in the stands this evening, we do not have a clock on the screen, but there's 15 seconds left on the clock. And uh, so Carl Albert may take their last uh, play right here for the first quarter, and then we'll be moving to the second quarter. The ball is snapped before the clock. Cash Ferris throws out there, and there was a big pile up there. Xavier Robinson was unable to break free from the pile. That was going to be a screen that was set up there, and it's going to bring up fourth down at the 19. But we're going to have to take a break because this is the end of the first quarter, and we'll be back with you here in just a moment on your Carl Albert Titan Oklahoma Sports Network. Here at Champion Plumbing, we grew up under these lights, so we know what hard work and dedication really means. Because to us, being the best is about helping our community when they need us most. It's about giving our all on every play and every job. Being your hometown champs means being part of a team that succeeds together. So every time you call, you get nothing but our best. And that's what makes us Champion Plumbing. This is Friday Night Football on the Oklahoma Sports Network. We're back with you here on your Carl Albert Titan Oklahoma Sports Network where we've just had the end of the first quarter and we haven't even finished our second 
uh, possession of the evening. Our second quarter sponsor is Champion Plumbing. Don't settle for less. Call the champs. And we are setting up right now for Speedwalk to come in and uh, try a field goal. And this would be 35 yards, actually about 36 from where he's setting up. And so he is setting up to do the field goal try. He was kicking these before the game. Ball is down. The kick is up. Is it long enough? It is, and it is good. And the Carl Albert Titans are on the board wow. with a field goal from 36 yards. Y'all, I, I, I want to tell you how impressive that was because Easton Harless has not snapped all year. Because of the injury to Caleb Cornell, Easton is now snapping those, and that is for him to do that and have everything – work the way it did is is amazing absolutely that's that's good coaching that's good technique and when you get those things together it, it just works really well well that's a great job there um, by the Carl Albert Titans special teams to be able to come on and kick that field goal and the score is now Carl Albert three and the Irish are seven your scoring recap is brought to you by Champion Plumbing. Don't settle for less. Call the champs. And your scoring recap, that was 4 minutes and 27 seconds. Went 80 yards, capped off there. It was actually 10 plays, <coughs> capped off there by a 36-yard Ethan Spiewak field goal. And that's what our scoring looks like right now is 7-3 to three for the Irish. Spiewak with the kicking duties again for the kickoff. Your kickoff is brought to you by CrossFit Complete, a community dedicated to the daily pursuit of fitness excellence and serving others. We strive to give our members the best hour of their day. Contact CrossFit Complete. Speedwalk backs up. Special teams is important in these games. So he's going to drive that ball down to an open spot there about the 20-yard line. He's free across that left side. I don't know how he got through that. I do not either. We had two guys right there in front of him, and he split them. But he split them. He did split them, and that was uh, Terrell Bruner there with the run. They've, that's a good scouting job there by uh, Bishop McGinnis to put him in the place where the ball's going to go. And so a good run back there by Bishop McGinnis, 11:49 in the second quarter, and McGinnis has the ball at the 44-yard line. We have to hope this one doesn't take near as long as the last one if we're going to yeah. get momentum in this game. Absolutely. River Warren still in at quarterback. He moves Taffy to the left. He's got two wide outs, and one is in motion right to left across the formation. Cuts back, hands off to Taffy. He's going to look for that outside edge. He's got it, and he's up the field, and that's going to be for about 10 yards. He is quick. Yes, he is. He runs really hard and runs really well. And they're blocking pretty good right now. I just Goes from the 44 in Irish territory down to the 47 in Titan territory. Nine yards picked up, brings up second and one. Traditionally, second and one, you throw it deep. That would make sense. Yep, they're going to hand did. it off to Taffy. He's going to take it. He's got the first down and more. He splits to the outside. He gets out of bounds. Now they're getting the edge on us, Coach. I, I, I'm not sure what's happening over on the other side. We're – too low to be able to see. That's right. But they are getting that outside edge, and uh, either somebody's turning us in or we're just not staying out. So that ball is going to be moved down to the 38-yard line, first and 10. Ball is out there. at the uh, Hits number 20. He misses two men, and he's going to take it down for about 12 more yards. That was four people that came in for the tackle, and all four missed. So he goes from the 47 and he makes it down to the 26. One of them was our best tackler. He just, he hit him. He just was too high. They're moving a little quicker this time, Coach. Yep. Got two men split to the left, one man to the right. Taffy is in the backfield. This time it's going to be handoff to Taffy. He cuts up the middle. He's got room across the middle, and he's going to gash him in again for about eight more yards. So that goes up to the 16-yard line. I just want to say, when I said I wanted a quicker drive, this is not what I meant by that. Uh, thank you. 
They're going to be at the 17. It's going to bring up second and one. And what you said earlier, you know, you can do anything you want to do at second and one. Yep. Hand off there to Taffy. He cuts up the middle. He got the first down and about another yard. He's met there by Caleb Cornell and Easton Harless. But he's going to move down to the 14-yard line and a first down for the Irish. Man in motion left or right across the formation. River Warren takes the ball. He hands off this time to number three. He's not the runner Taffy is, and that's a good stick there. Caden. Caden yeah, Cornell. Caden. Came, came from his linebacker position and, and was wide open, and he, he met him and dropped him for no, no gain, gain. No gain on the play, second and ten. That's uh, number nine there in the backfield. There he is again. And that's Shadid. And this time Shadid's going to pick up about four, maybe five on the play. So he goes to the eight-yard line. So that's six yards picked up on the play, brings up third and four. Taffy's back in the ball game. And I, this is their power set. They have both 33 and 30 in. Got 33 playing that tight end position over mm -hmm. here. Be a handoff there to Taffy. He cuts to the left. He gets caught right there at the line of scrimmage. Looks like they're going to move it maybe one more yard down to the six. Picked up two, brings up fourth down and two. There's no doubt they're going to go for it here. Well, I bet they run it down and then call a timeout. Moving in some uh, different players on the line of scrimmage. Uh, that's 64. That's A.J. Mason coming in. He'll be there at at uh, left tackle. They're going to let that clock run down. It's 824 and counting. Seven seconds left on the play clock. And Bishop McGinnis is going to take a timeout. So we're going to take a timeout with them here on your Carl Albert Titan Oklahoma Sports Network. is Friday Night Football on the Oklahoma Sports Network. We're back with you here on your Carl Albert Titan Oklahoma Sports Network where it's fourth down and two and the ball is at the six yard line. Seven plays on this drive, taking up about three and a half minutes so far. Eight minutes and 17 seconds left here in the second quarter. Your second quarter sponsor, Champion Plumbing. Don't settle for less. Call the champs. I don't know what they're going to do, but they're going to be in some type of a goal line situation. I'll bet we move. We shift. Nope, didn't get a chance. Be a hand off to Taffy. He's going to hit that left side, and he's he got, got the two. He's going to get down all the way to about the three-yard line, so he's going to pick up three. He needed two, and it's first and goal. Just a simple off-tackle play. They're just they're blocking us right now. At the two-yard line. We're not getting any uh, penetration or any feeling by a linebacker. There it is. Taffy again. comes across, and he bounces into the end zone. Touchdown for Bishop McGinnis. Two-yard bump into the end zone. And the Irish lead 13 to three at this point. They're getting set up for the point after try. Mm -hmm. 
Ball is down. Kick is up. Close, but it is good. Yep. And so Bishop McGinnis goes on top. 14 to 3 with eight minutes left in the second quarter. We'll be back with you here in just a moment on your Carl Albert Titan Oklahoma Sports Network. is Friday Night Football on the Oklahoma Sports Network. We're back with you here on your Carl Albert Titan Oklahoma Sports Network. That was the second drive for the Irish and two touchdowns as a result. And the score is 14-3, the Irish over the Titans at this point. And so here's your third kickoff actually the fourth kickoff of the evening and that ball is going to go deep out of the end zone for the touchback and so Carl Albert will take possession at the 20 yard line and coach my uh, keys to the game I said that the uh, Bishop McGinnis uh, offensive line was unremarkable but they're looking pretty remarkable right now yeah they're blocking us right now we're having a hard time getting off blocks and I again I'm not sure uh, they didn't look like that. No, we, I, I we thought we could them. take advantage of that yeah. and keep them on the move. But right now, if you're just going to hand off to Taffy right and left, Xavier Robinson in, trips to the left. Quarterback is? The quarterback is Reed DeQuazy. Reed's going to hand off there. No, he's going to keep it himself. He looks up the field, and he's going to push up the field for about seven yards. Great job there by DeQuazy. We noticed that um, in, the, in last week's game against Guthrie, Guthrie's quarterback had some uh, success doing exactly what Reed just did. He gets up to the 25-yard line. It's going to be second and five. We weren't sure if we were going to see Reed in a contact position, but definitely he is. And him keeping the ball right there, that was just an RPO. And He read it right. He did. One man split wide to the right, two to the left. Xavier Robinson in the backfield. DeQuasey's going to take the ball, moves over to the left side, pitch back to Robinson. He's got some room. He oh, jumps yes, over sir. a man at the 30. He pushes down to the 40, down to the 44-yard line. <laughs> that used to be illegal, and I think they just got him for doing that. There is a Coach flag. Dunn is asking about it. There is a flag out here, and I think they did change that rule. And uh, so, because I know we had a guy that did it a lot back when you yeah. were coaching. <laughs> yeah, he did. He was very good. He One was... time he actually kicked a guy. <laughs> that was, that's another story. Yeah. They're going to pick there up that flag. There we go. And so the ball is up to the 45-yard line. That is a 20-yard pickup there by Xavier Robinson. You know, I want <laughs> – I'm not going to say anything. First and 10 for the Titans. 7-16 left here in the quarter. That's two games in a row that officials have, have picked up the flag. Have waved off a flag. That's, that's right. wonderful. Two men to the right, one man to the left. Robinson's going to keep the ball. He pushes up to that right side. He gets past the first line and gets there for about three or four yards. So he's going to go from the 45 up to the 48. That's going to bring up second and seven. I don't know if you saw or not, but I, you know, I just yes. happened to be watching Tanner. <laughs> Yeah, Tanner Johnson, and he had a, a his defensive tackle, the guy that he's blocking, and he still had him, and he just kind of, at the end, he just kind of <clears throat> threw him to the ground. It was beautiful to see. Reed DeQuazy in at quarterback. Got a little bunch set to the left. Xavier Robinson in the backfield. DeQuazy takes the snap. He's going to be follow, He's going to be led by Robinson around that left side. He just pushes Go forward. Reed. And he does a great job at getting forward and gets the first down and a little bit more. I think number 55 and, and Brock Johnson are going to be 
Not so good buddies. Back and forth, back and forth down here between them two. Absolutely. Keep coming in there, Tessa. The ball is at the 41-yard line, first and 10 for the Carl Albert Titans. That time, DeQuazy just followed Robinson down around that left side. Trips to the left. Robinson's deep in the backfield. DeQuazy takes the snap. He's going to pitch it out here to Tayshawn. Oh. Tayshawn's going to do his best to get back oh, the line of scrimmage, pick up about or loss of about two. Well, let's see where the they put him. Flag down here. Oh, there is a flag. All right. Let's see what he says here. I don't think we were lined up correctly. I think we had too many men in the backfield. Man in the white. Oh. You actually call a hold there. And so that's going to move the ball back 10 yards. That's going to put the ball back into uh, Titan territory at the 49-yard line. The call is illegal block on the Titans, a 10-yard penalty. Hmm. So the ball is back at the 49-yard line, still first down and 20. Trey Washington, Tayshawn James, Tristan Haynes to the right. DeQuasey's going to keep the ball. He's going to go around that right side. He cuts back up, and he rolls down, and that's the first time I've actually seen him take a decent hit and roll down. And he rolled over and did very well. He's going to pick up about five on the play. Moves from the 49 down to the 47. He looks like he's healed to me. It looks, it looks pretty healed. When you can roll over with somebody on you, that's, that's pretty healed. Second down and 16. Hmm. Two men split to the left, one man to the right. Reed DeQuazy's going to take the snap. He's going to drop back to pass. He's looking. He's got a man across the middle. That's Trey Washington, and that's a first down for the Carl Albert Titans at the 29-yard line. Not a bad, bad throw for a guy that hadn't played in six weeks. That's right. Very nice. And that was an in cut just like that was what they have been successful with. Exactly. When they've thrown the ball, that was just an in cut by Trey. I say just an in cut. It was an in cut. Trey Washington, wide out to the right. Xavier Robinson in the backfield. Reed's going to take it and keep it himself. He cuts up the middle. He's going to get about three to four. That's called a speed option, and uh, Reed is supposed to run right at the defensive end and then pitch off of him, but he wasn't there, so Reed cut it up. Took it himself. Made him commit. So the ball is at the 26-yard line. Three yards picked up on the play. Brings up second and seven. Four minutes and 11 seconds here before the half. Reminder, your second quarter sponsor is Champion Plumbing. Don't settle for less. Call the champs. Xavier Robinson in. Reed DeQuazy is going to keep it himself across Same that thing. left side. Pitch to Robinson. Robinson cuts back in the middle. Hits one man. Hits another. Drives forward. Is going to be very close to the first down. They are good tacklers, Coach. Yes, uh, they are. Number four and number 20 and number five are all really good tacklers. DeQuazy comes out, and they're going to go into the heavy set, Coach. Mm -hmm. The ball is at the 19-yard line. They, when we substituted, they substituted like three guys up front. Yep. So this is one of those where we'll see who the toughest is. First and ten, heavy set, lean to the right. Xavier Robinson takes the ball. He cuts back up the middle. He's got a little hole. He's going to push forward for about two more yards. From the 19 down to just outside the 15, We'll go ahead and call it the 16. So it's three yard picked up on the play, brings up second and seven. So we are in the red zone. The red zone is brought to you by Dynamite Driving LLC, dedicated to providing you a quality education. Call 405 467 9121. It's a chess game between coaches right now. When we go into our heavy set, uh, they're going to bring in four extra guys, four new guys, bigger guys. And when we go into our normal slot stuff, and they're going to bring their four guys back out. 
Oh, oh we got a motion giant. back here. And that uh, it's going to be a free pass to the end zone. And it uh, would have been a touchdown, but uh, that time oh, Xavier Robinson was losing his balance and was leaning forward, and they're going to get uh, basically backfield motion, but that's what it used to be called. It's just, it's just <laughs> it reminds me of a song. <laughs> yeah, it's just motion on the offense, so it's going to be a five-yard penalty. He's going to take the ball back to the 21-yard line. Or, yeah, they're going to take it. Well, yeah, they're going to take it. Well, they were, they were thinking about it. Well, it was a touchdown. <laughs> yeah, we, we refused. Yeah, <laughs> well, we'll take that. Yeah. But yeah. the The reception was unbelievable. By yes, the way. absolutely. X went over the top of a guy. He, the guy got mossed. Ball goes back to the twenty one yard line. Is going to bring up second down and twelve. DeQuazy in at quarterback still. We are unbalanced to the right. Yes, sir. Robinson moves a little further to the right. DeQuazy's going to take the snap. He's going to move to the right side. He's going to look, and he's going to try to make it up the middle. He's going to pick up about three yards on the play. Going to get inside the 20, down to about the 18-yard line. That's three yards picked up, brings up third and nine. That might have that, that, that might have missed that read. I think I would have gone ahead and given that to X and... Well, he had guys flying around in his face, so yep. I, I, I think he did the right thing. He, he's told he's never wrong to keep it. Right, exactly. That's the way it is on any option play. Quarterback, you're never wrong to keep it. That's right. It's just like every pass. There's only, you know, two good things that can happen. <laughs> the Quasi's going to keep it. He's going to bust back across that left side. He's got a little bit of running room. It's going to bring up fourth down. Well, they played that well. They did. Um, they stayed home. That's that's <laughs> that's frustrating. It is. What are they doing playing it right? They're going to get that down to the 13-yard line. That's a five-yard pickup. Brings up fourth down and three. I think we'll do the same thing they did. Absolutely. We'll run it down to yep. one second on the play clock. Or on the, yeah. On the, yeah, play clock, and then call a timeout. Got a minute and 13 seconds on the clock, 12 seconds on the play clock. And so it's going to get down to right at one minute, and then we'll call timeout. And Coach Dunn is making his way down to call the timeout, and he does. So one minute left on the clock, and we are at a timeout. We're going to take a timeout with you. We'll be back in just a moment on your Carl Albert Titan Oklahoma Sports Network. We're back with you here on your Carl Albert Titan Oklahoma Sports Network. And uh, it's fourth down and uh, a long three, actually. Uh, fourth down and a long three. And the Carl Albert Titans are going to go for it with one minute to go here in the half. I Reed DeQuazy in at quarterback on this drive, and Reed's done a great job. I was telling you at, 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 during the break that Coach Johnson is, has a wonderful perspective on when to call what. DeQuazy takes the snap. He's going to look to this left side. He's going to try to get to the outside, and he does. It. He's got the first down. The Drop ball the bounces ball. out of bounds there uh, as the ball came down, but they're saying the ball was down, and uh, it looks like it was enough for the first down. We're going to see where they mark it, and the chains are right here on this side. And the man in the white hat yes. says, first down, first and goal for your Carl Albert Titans. Uh, that play surprised me. 
<laughs> and I guess it surprised them. Yeah. <laughs> 51 seconds left. Ball is at the nine-yard line. This might be where and the clock is ticking. Where we get an opportunity to to take advantage of our height at receiver. And then we have two six three kids out there. And I don't think they have anybody that's six foot. DeQuasey's going to hand off there to Robinson. Robinson's going to try to get to that outside. Oh, he, he cuts back up. He pounds forward. Touchdown, ah. Carl Albert. boy, X. That's just great running there on that right side. That was. Touchdown, Carl Albert, and that's going to tighten the score up right here before half. See, and I think that's what X needs to do. I, you know, me not being a defense or running backs coach, but he stretched it out. He took off and he ran as hard as he could. And once they tried to out, out uh, gun him out to the outside, he planted his foot and went inside. Went inside, yeah. Which is a wonderful job of doing. He did a great job. Point after try is good. Carl Albert now 10. And the McGinnis Fighting Irish 14. We'll be back with you here in just a moment on your Carl Albert Titan Oklahoma Sports Network. This is a presentation of the Oklahoma Sports Network. We're back with you here on your Carl Albert Titan Oklahoma Sports Network. Your scoring recap is brought to you by Champion Plumbing. Don't settle for less. Call the champs. That was an 80-yard drive taking up 13 plays, 7 minutes and 43 seconds. And the Carl Albert Titans uh, pay back. Uh, that second score of the Irish, and the score is now 10 to 14. Coach Goff? Yes, sir. Reed DeQuasey looks good. <laughs> Reed DeQuasey, he's healed. Yeah, yeah. Somebody, you know, that, that, that doctor that put him back together again uh, did a great job with those seven or eight screws that are in there. Yep. Tessa, you were wanting to see Reed DeQuasey, and you're getting a chance to see him tonight. There, I think that offense has a whole different look right there with Reed at quarterback. Um, I even think maybe it gives X some more momentum uh, as he's trying to run the ball. One of the things it does, there Bounce. we go, kicking right to two again. You're going to have to peel off that side. And he gets knocked out of bounds over there about the 41 yard line. One of the things it does is it takes the, it, it makes the defense have to play two guys coming out of the backfield. Exactly. And, and uh, you know, that just, that just a, it's a different look. Well, and, and normally, you don't have a player assigned to the quarterback. Right. So it, it, it – yeah, Usually it's 11 an, on 10. You gain an extra <laughs> right. extra man. Uh, but the way they play defense, they have somebody there. Right. They have eight men in the box, and they're daring you to throw. And so it's survival of the fittest. Right. 22 seconds left on the clock. And uh, River Warren's going to take the snap. He's going to drop back to pass. He's looking across that left side. He's got a man out there at the sidelines. He holds it up and statues to the ground. And he's going to make it up to the 46-yard line in Titan territory. And that's first and 10 for McGinnis. You know, we're playing cover four. Right. Cover two in the back end. We've got two, two safeties and two corners. And I, I guess our, our Sam and, and Will are dropping too. 17 seconds left. Matter of fact, if you look at this safety on this side, his number is four. Yep, it is. That time is going to pass underneath, and he's going to get out of bounds there. It was pass out to Taffy, covered there by Easton Harless. 11 seconds. That was a five-yard pickup. The ball goes to the 41 in Titan territory. Just to let you know, they've got a really strong-legged kicker. Yes, they do. We saw him uh, in pregame. I, you know, he could – Probably kick one from right here with the wind at his back a little bit. We're in a three-man rush, dropping eight. So they're probably going to run the ball. Oh, I was watching their coach do his signals. 11 seconds left, <laughs> second and five. River Warren takes the ball, drops back to pass. They got a little pressure. They're going downfield. They got a man. Reed crazy. Beautiful defensive play there by Reed DeQuasey, 
That's what he's supposed to do. Knocks that ball out of there. That's a great job. Five seconds left on the clock. So now you wonder. And Bishop McGinnis is going to take a timeout. We're going to stay with you here uh, through this timeout. Just a reminder that our second quarter sponsor is Champion Plumbing. Don't settle for less. Call the champs. So five seconds to go. It would be, uh, I don't think he's got that much leg because that no. would be uh, about a uh, 50, 58 yard kick. I, I don't think he's got that much leg. We're in a, uh, we're going to be in a prevent, and I can't remember the name of it, but it's a prevent type defense where we'll rush three and we'll drop eight and there'll be three guys back about the five yard line. And their job is to either, if somebody breaks free, to tackle him. Tackle him. Or if the ball's in the air, to knock, knock it down. Yeah, They're not going to try and intercept <laughs> No, it. just get it out. Yeah. Well, and I saw, the you reason know, I say that is I saw X going in, and I think he's one of the guys in the middle. Yeah. One of the things you see there with Reed DeQuazy is just the athleticism. That was a beautiful job at high-pointing that ball yeah. all the way to the top and just knocking it out of the air. Okay, it looks like 13's in at quarterback, so. No, he's not. He's. Out here at, at a wide out. Five seconds left on the clock. Third and five, so there's no reason to do anything but go for the end zone. Well, you can see the three guys back deep. Uh, Tayshawn's on the 10. Those are all our receivers Trey. as well. River uh, steps up. Boom. He's going to throw deep down to the end zone. It's going to get knocked away. Great job. And that's the end of the half. That's what they were supposed to do. Where the Carl Albert Titans have one of their kids struck got, back. They've got two guys down on the field. One's rolling around like he's, bless his heart. They've got two guys down on the field. I'm not sure what that's and, about. And but they ran into each other. Yeah, they did. We're going to take it to the half. Our halftime sponsor is Tooney Buys Houses. We buy and renovate homes. We also lease and owner finance homes. Throughout the state of Oklahoma, we'll be back with you with our halftime show here in just a few moments on your Carl Albert Titan Oklahoma Sports Network. Here at Champion Plumbing, we grew up under these lights, so we know what hard work and dedication really means. Because to us, being the best is about helping our community when they need us most. It's about giving our all on every play and every job. Being your hometown champs means being part of a team that succeeds together. So every time you call, you get nothing but our best. And that's what makes us Champion Plumbing. Augusta Contracting is a general contracting company that specializes in commercial and industrial construction projects. When you choose us as a partner for a project, we assure quality workmanship, exceptional performance, and unparalleled client satisfaction. At Augusta Contracting, safety is top priority. Our main focus is to send our team home to their families safe, happy, and healthy. Augusta Contracting, where your idea turns to reality and your project comes to life. When I'm flying, I put my helmet on, 
my visor down, my mask up. You don't know who I am. Whether I'm African American, Asian American, Hispanic, white, male or female, you just know I'm an American Airman. Kicking your butt. I'm General C.Q. Brown Jr. Come join us. Coast Technology Group is your full IT managed service provider, utilizing simple, reliable technology for your home and business. Remote monitoring and management, network infrastructure, and cybersecurity, all with 24 7, 365 day live support. When you partner with CTG, you get the 150 years combined experience of our experts, helping your business grow while keeping your system secure. We're back with you here at Pribble Stadium. Carl Albert Titaner taking on the Bishop McGinnis Fighting Irish. And to let you know where we are right now, the score is Bishop McGinnis 14 and the Carl Albert Titans 10. Bishop McGinnis got the ball first. Uh, Carl Albert actually won uh, the toss, and so we will be getting the ball when we come back, and that's a good thing. I mean, that's that's a smart thing in regard to the way the coaches played that last half. You bet. Um, but uh, Bishop McGinnis took the ball 80 yards, burned up 7 minutes and 48 seconds on a 17-play drive, and uh, nothing huge, just, just chunks at a time, and uh, took that 7-0 uh, lead. Carl Albert took the ball 80 yards, 10 plays, 4 minutes and 27 seconds, and capped that off with a 36-yard field goal there by Ethan Spiewak. Bishop McGinnis took over again. They had a great run back on the kickoff to the 44-yard line, and there uh, they took up about three minutes and 45 seconds and nine plays and took it in for the touchdown and scored their second touchdown of the evening, and that made the score 3-14. to 14. That kind of put uh, Carl Albert under the gun to have to score a touchdown, and so they went eight minutes and four. Uh, they got the ball with eight minutes and four seconds, and uh, took that seven minutes and 43 seconds, burning all but 22 seconds in the first half, and uh, went 80 yards on a 13-play drive and scored to bring the score, Carl Albert 10 and Bishop McGinnis 14. So, Coach Goff, uh, uh, what do you expect to see here when we head into the second half? Well, I expect our defensive coaches, uh, Coach Herbert and then the rest of the guys will uh, – make some adjustments on their stretch play. Uh, they're, they're doing an excellent job blocking us on the stretch, and we're not either we're not feeling good enough and he's cutting back, or they're just getting the corner on us. Right. So I imagine we'll make some type of an adjustment. You can, you can stun into that. You can do all kinds of stuff. But, again, I, I think it's wherever number 33 is in the backfield, that's the side that's they're going the to gonna go. Yeah. Well, that stretch play was what was killing us earlier, and, uh, and it wasn't – um, it's, it's like I said, they, they had a 17-play drive, and then they had another nine-play drive, and it wasn't that they were taking huge chunks at a time, but yeah. they were they were picking up seven, six, you know, eight yards every time, mm -hmm. and uh, that just continued to just eat away, not just eat away at the clock, but eat away at the yardage. And, um, and so they've had two possessions and scored twice two touchdowns. We've had two possessions, scored twice, one touchdown, one field goal. I, I want to bring up a, a, a fourth down play that Carl Albert had. Uh, it's fourth and four, right? And we put the hands, put the ball in the hands of number four, right? And he came through for us. Absolutely, what a wonderful deal for him. Absolutely, and for and the team, it is so good to see Reed DeQuazy back out there running the full thing. Uh, you know, doing doing the full thing, being able to run, pass, and uh, and actually then playing defense. You saw how important that was. Exactly. Uh, just just a few minutes ago, and I actually really thought that he would probably play more defense this year. I mean, that was just me thinking from last year. Right. Would play play more defense this year and have uh, Cash play quarterback more. But it, it hadn't worked that way because he got injured in the first game. And right. Well, I can remember coming into this season, uh, talking with the coaches preseason, and, uh, you know, everybody knew what Reed could do uh, standing behind the center. Sure. But 
everybody was really excited about him playing safety. Yeah. And uh, because he's a headhunter out there. Uh-huh. And, uh, <laughs> and, and at 210 pounds, he can headhunt. Absolutely. And so uh, uh, it is exciting to be able to see him back in the ball game yeah. and uh, making those kind of plays. Well, we're going to take a little break, and we'll be back with you here. We're going to uh, walk through the 5A scores from last night, and I think there's only one other game uh, this evening. And uh, we'll uh, be back with you here in just a moment on your Carl Albert Titan Oklahoma Sports Network. I put my helmet on, my visor down, my mask up. You don't know who I am. Whether I'm African American, Asian American, Hispanic, white, male or female, you just know I'm an American airman kicking your butt. I'm General C.Q. Brown Jr. Come join us. This is Friday Night Football on the Oklahoma Sports Network. We're with you here on your Carl Albert Titan Oklahoma Sports Network, and the Carl Albert Titans are uh, trailing right now by four at half. And uh, Reed DeQuazy has come in at quarterback, um, and that was on the second drive of the evening. And uh, a little bit of spark you could see there by the uh, Carl Albert offense. I I think it pepped pepped us up a little bit. Absolutely. So um, as we look down through the uh, through the games that have happened uh, last night and that are happening uh, now, uh, Dell City is just pounding Tulsa Memorial 42 to 7 in the second quarter. Um, El Reno is up on Ardmore 14 to 2. And that's a surprise to me. Yes it is. And they're at half. Uh, Noble is beating Elgin, and that's that's a pretty big deal. Elgin's yeah. undefeated, and they've they've got a lot of pride going in, and uh, that's in the second quarter as well. Uh, um, let's see. If I look on down here, I see uh, uh, Eisenhower uh, was able to pull it out against Shawnee at Shawnee. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Altus, uh, you know, Altus has just had a tough, tough season. Oh, bless their heart. Uh, they haven't, they haven't won a game, and uh, and really, they haven't been in a game uh, yeah. uh, this season as well. Um, they are another OSN network, and uh, so we we know that uh, uh, you know that's a proud program down there. But they really have just uh, uh, fallen off here uh, lately. So uh, Guthrie went and put a, or they actually uh, hosted Southeast and uh, put a pounding on them, seventy to six. Uh, Midwest City beating MacArthur. MacArthur was uh, rated number eight in the state, and uh, Midwest City beat MacArthur last night, 37 to 14. I think MacArthur was undefeated until last night. Yeah, they right? were. They were five and zero. Oh, that's correct. Um, you know, one of the teams that we don't talk about, and really haven't heard anybody talk about around the state, and I find this crazy. Somebody said it on sports radio this week, and it and it really just kind of jogged my memory. I couldn't believe it. But Collinsville is six and zero. Oh. Nobody's talking about them. <laughs> Nobody says a thing. Isn't that you know, crazy? they're the defending state champions. I was going to say they're only the state champions from mm-hmm. last year, and and nobody's nobody's talking about them all. They beat Will Rogers fifty to fourteen last night. Um, 
Coweta uh, pounding on uh, Durant. Um, Bishop Kelly beating up on Pryor. Uh, yeah. Claremore dropping Edison. And uh, Grove, uh, again, another team that another we don't team. think about because yeah. they're kind of new in the 5A arena. But uh, Grove uh, went and put 70 up on Nathan Hale uh, last night. And uh, that's your 5A rundown. And uh, so, uh, you know, we're in it. Both of these teams are undefeated in district play. It's 3-0. Oh. Right. And uh, so um, – Let's see what the – what do you – I mean, we, we've talked about we know we're going to see some changes out of the defense, and I believe that. I You know, I definitely believe Coach Herbert is going to come out with um, uh, just a little different look, and, and he's told his guys what to look for. Right. Um, so, uh, do you see any offensive changes that um, – No, that, I think – I, I don't think they'll do anything any different on offense. They'll just keep uh, doing what they do with uh, Reed, and uh, they'll let him read – the the play uh, and he'll either keep it or give it yeah one of the things i you know one of the things i think about when i think about reed the crazy is okay so uh to this point now he came in in the he came in in the second drive so he's had 13 plays he's rolled up on that shoulder a couple right. of times mm -hmm. he's backed into some some plays a couple of times uh, and he's thrown a really nice ball. And he's throwing a really nice ball. Yeah. True, it's not. It's with the other arm. Right. But it's 13 live plays. Yeah. And you've got to believe that the psyche in his head now is saying, I, I can go. Yeah. Let me go. Well, and, and <laughs> he may be, uh, hopefully his, his adrenaline has calmed down a little mm -hmm. bit, and he's going to be able to make even better decisions than he did the first half. Absolutely. You know, one of the things I remember from our Coweta game and uh, and I know, you know, I, I I can look back in my book and I can see exactly what happened. But DeQuazy was in on that first drive, took us from the twenty yard line, drove us right down the field, and then had the injury. Yeah. And um, uh, you just really wonder even about that game how how it would have been different because you, you do. And, and and he had just spent more time with the first team. Oh, uh, he had you know he had. He is a he is a true threat running and throwing, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, so defenses can play. You know you have to play him totally different. And uh, I know that uh, Bishop McGinnis was preparing for him. There's no way they wouldn't have. They're right. a good coaching staff. Oh yeah. And uh, and and they did see some film last week, which showed well he must be okay enough to get in the ball game. Right. So. Um, you know, and they're 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 over there thinking. Well, those the Carlover coaches will definitely have a package, at least a package. It, for yes, and they didn't. Uh, they probably didn't think it'd be that much. I was going to say I, that doesn't look like a package. That no, looks like a taken back over. That's the game. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm thinking. So um, uh, you're right. Uh, he put it uh, their number a little twenty seven right there. Just kicked one from uh, uh, forty or twenty two. Kicked one from forty two yards. And uh, put it through, and so that—that's probably the extent. I don't—I don't think he can do much more than that. But uh, they were back about five yards from where they were before half. Okay, I think it was somewhere around in there. Yeah, you'd got it—you'd have it down somewhere, I think. So here he is. Yeah, that one's a little bit short, and off to the right. All right. Well, we're going to come back here in just a few moments. Your halftime is brought to you by Tooney Buys Houses. We buy and renovate homes. We also lease and owner finance homes throughout the state of Oklahoma. Tooney Buys Houses. Your instant replay this evening is brought to you by Fathom Realty, owner J.R. Rowlett. Call 405-445-8971. We've heard from our audience that you appreciate the instant replay. And uh, we just appreciate Tyler Townsend doing a great job as the producer this evening and putting us uh, where we can see the game. So we'll be back with you here in just a few moments on your Carl Albert Titan Oklahoma Sports Network. Coast Technology Group specializes in audio, video, and lighting for schools, house of worship, home, and business. 
Work with our team's engineers to design the right system for your conference rooms. Video telecommunications, stadiums, auditoriums, video walls, home theater, and automation. Whether your next project is large or small, let our team with over 150 years of combined experience help design the right system with simple, reliable technology. is 70% water. And 30% land. But the entire sky belongs to us. is Friday Night Football on the Oklahoma Sports Network. We're back with you here on your Carl Albert Titan, Oklahoma Sports Network. One minute until the end of the half. I think we've uh, kind of talked over what the, maybe the coaching adjustments might be and uh, Tessa, what have you got going on down there on the sidelines? I think the biggest change there at the end for me and what I'm looking to see here is uh, the momentum shift for Carl Albert on offense was immense. And I think that starts with uh, putting in Reed DeQuasi there at quarterback. You know, as we were talking earlier, McGinnis loads the box there. So with DeQuasi's quickness, it's hard for that uh, those people coming downhill on the McGinnis defense to get back and catch him. So I think um, if we keep him in there at quarterback that opens a lot for the offense and hopefully they can get that momentum rolling and get a comeback here. Absolutely. We do get the ball coming back uh, for the second half and uh, so the Carl Albert offense is going to be on the field here in just a moment. Um, you know momentum that's a it's a big word yeah. but uh, uh, I, I still go back to the psychology of having uh, your number one quarterback uh, back in the game and uh, it does lift up the rest of the offense. I don't know how else you can say that. Yeah, it'll, it'll come down to how our offense plays against how their defense plays. Right. Because they, they're in there at halftime, and they're thinking, yeah, yeah they're going to get the ball first. Mm -hmm. Four's going to be the quarterback, and we're going to have to stop four. Right. So they're, they're making adjustments along with us making adjustments. Yeah, absolutely. And we'll see, uh, you know, and it's just a chess game. It, it's always been a chess game ever since – there was a creation of football. That's what football is all say, about. Back, back even when I was here coaching, by golly. Yeah, that. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, <damn it. laughs> so. Yeah, that's, that's what it's all about is, uh, is that chess match. Yeah. And, uh, um, well, I, again, I will, I will admit, their offensive line, and, and yep. I, I will tell you, uh, I saw us getting a little more pressure, but w there was nothing stopping them necessarily. Mm -hmm. Their offensive line is better than I saw on, on tape. Yeah. And maybe that was just an off night at Guthrie. Well, I'll give you that. I was going to say that may have that may have a lot to do with it. Guthrie it, may have a whole. I was going to say it may have a lot to do with what Guthrie does on defense. So yeah, um, uh, Guthrie's always been really tough defensively. Always. Yeah. Well, um, Tessa, are the um, uh, are the are the flags? Did the flags almost hit you earlier when they ran by? So. I kept my head on a swivel this time. I didn't get hit. I wasn't <laughs> super close. I get closer on our uh, home side when I get too close to the bleachers. So <laughs> Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, that, that one guy carrying that big flag, I can tell you, he doesn't have a great ability to turn or stop. Nope, I run the other way yeah, every it's, time. It's just pretty much a I'm dead run. Yeah. Yes. So um, uh, we're fortunate. You know, it is. Uh, we talked about it early, and uh, you asked for the – uh, for the wind to drop, we haven't talked about yeah. it the whole first half. The wind's gone. It's gone virtually, and uh, flag it's, is limp. Flag is limp. It's a beautiful night. It is it's uh, for great, football. Great night for football. I was actually thinking it was going to be a little cooler, but no, it's it's a beautiful night yeah. for football. And uh, uh, again, it's just 
Um, I, I don't know. You know, people that have never gone to Friday night football and Friday night lights, uh, I, I don't know how they live. I, there's something about Friday night and, and high school football that is, uh, is absolutely just enamoring to me. Yeah, it's, it's quite addictive. It is. I think it's, it, it's a good way to put it. Um, I, I got addicted uh, when I was a seventh grade assistant football coach at Kerr Junior High back in 1977. Okay, so, I have to ask you this question. On. Since you said that, <laughs> I have to ask you this question. So, number one, number one, I heard just through the grapevine. Oh my gosh! Okay, that you were an incredible basketball player. It, I wasn't incredible. Well, <laughs> I could play a little. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and you played for Star Spencer, right? I did. Okay, and uh, you guys went pretty far. We did. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We were, we were pretty good my senior year. Yeah, that's okay. I, and and I know that. So, but something very interesting to that was, um, you actually, um, started coaching football. I did. And did you play football? I. I well, I'll, I tell everybody I played in the ninth grade, yeah. and I got to go down on a kickoff in a varsity Star Spencer High School football game as a ninth grader and got my clock cleaned. <laughs> it was against Choctaw, and this guy came out of nowhere, and he hit me and my – you know, literally you hear of helmets going sideways. Right. Mine was sideways. On your head. On my head. Right. And you're looking out the ear hole. <laughs> and I played basketball and baseball from then on. Okay. That's, that's, yeah, that's what I heard. But, again, you you are an excellent defensive coach, well, defensive football coach, and have been for many years. Well, and uh, so I, I always think of guys like uh, Mike Leach. Yeah. You know, Mike Leach is kind of, you know, he's kind of crazy sometimes, but he's a brilliant offensive mind, never played football in his life, right. and is an attorney. That's yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's he's. A, He's the pirate. There you go. Our kickoff is brought to you by CrossFit Complete, a community dedicated to the daily pursuit of fitness excellence and serving others. That goes out of the end zone, and Carl Albert will have their first possession of the second half beginning at the 20-yard line. That is a big weapon, being able to make somebody go 20 from the 20-yard line, making them go 80 yards. 80 yards every it's time. a big weapon. So here we go with the beginning of the second half. Your third quarter sponsor Bobby Lewis Insurance, surprisingly great rates with two locations to serve you. In Choctaw, call 405-281-6700 in Dell City, 405-670-3665. Reed DeQuazy in at quarterback. Xavier Robinson in at the halfback position. Man in motion, left to right. The ball is, Boy, ball is down on the ground. That's oh, an incomplete my pass. Thank goodness. That's right. That is an incomplete pass. Yep, that's an incomplete pass. That uh, uh, that that was a fortunate uh, yeah. incompletion. Yeah, yeah, because that ball was uh, never really in the hands of anyone, and uh, it goes to second and ten. Do it again. Second and ten. Well, don't do that again. No. Tanner Norman, Gary Ray, Trayton Holland, Easton Collier, Brock Johnson are the front men up front. They are pushing the play clock back up. And now they're starting again. Reed DeQuazy in at quarterback. Xavier Robinson in the backfield. Going to hand off there to Robinson. He's got a little hole across that left side. And he's just going to push and drag people. He's going to pick up about six yards. Yep. Never goes to the ground. They do a really good job of swarming the ball. They, they get a whole bunch of hats to the ball. He makes it to the 27-yard line. Which is one of the things that Carl Albert is famous for. That's right. Um, that swarming defense. We used to run a, a drill, and I'm, I'm assuming they still do it. It's called a uh, two-whistle drill. And uh, if you're not to the ball in the second whistle, you get to do some up-downs. Two men to the right, one man to the left. Robinson in, the halfback. Reed's going to keep it himself across that right side. He's got the first down. Good job. Reed does a great job at just reading what he had, takes that hole across that right side. Moves the ball up to the 33-yard line. First down, Carl Albert. I think he sees that he sees that hole a little bit better uh, each time he runs the play. Mm -hmm. Well, that's why I was saying, I mean, he's only got 13 plays in right now. So, 14, 15, 16 plays, <laughs> <laughs> you know, as of this and counting since he's come back. One man split wide to the right, two to the left. 
Robinson in the backfield. DeQuasey's going to drop back to pass. He's going to throw it down there. Oh, Trey Washington just off the tip of his hands. He saw the same thing I did. It, it, uh, set, Trey's 6'3", and the guy that was guarding him was like 5'9". He's got to be 5'9", at most. And he got by him. I mean, he tried to, to jam him, and he was one of the kids that, that got uh, banged up down in the end zone on that last play. Uh, seven was. Second and ten. That would have been touchdown and out the gate uh, because there was nothing that was going to stop that just right off the tip of his fingers. Yeah, just a little bit too far. Just a bit outside. Yeah. Just. Got a stack to the right. Again, we're unbalanced to the mm -hmm. right. This time it's going to be a handoff to Robinson. He cuts back. He's got a little open room across the 40, the 50, down to the 45. He's stiff on the floor. He's going all the way. Touchdown, Carl Albert. No flags. No flags. Really good play. X. <laughs> that was exemplary. My goodness. 67-yard touchdown there by Xavier Robinson. Well, he ca he came out the back door on that. Yep. Which and you can do if you get a good wash down the back side on the front side. He came out the back and uh, what a stiff arm! That yeah, ought, that ought to be a highlight. That was a beautiful stiff arm right there. I think that kid thought I can push him out of bounds, and Robinson had another idea. Yeah, that true. kick is up and it is good, and Carl Albert now leads 17 to 14 over the Bishop McGinnis Fighting Irish. We'll be back with you in just a moment on your Carl Albert Titan Oklahoma Sports Network. Is Friday Night Football on the Oklahoma Sports Network. We're back with you here on your Carl Albert Titan Oklahoma Sports Network. Tessa, what did you see down there? All that happened right in front of you. I saw Xavier Robinson throw someone down like I've never seen in a high school <laughs> game. He makes the defensive players look ridiculous in uh, a lot of situations, and that was it right there. That was one of them. All right. That was a minute and 33 seconds on that scoring drive. Went 80 yards, capped off by a 67-yard touchdown run by Xavier Robinson. Just five plays. Carl Albert goes on top for the first time this evening, 17-14. to 14. Ethan Spiewak's lining up for the kick. Your kickoff is brought to you by CrossFit Complete. And he's going to put that ball down Bounce. there at the 10-yard line across the 15 to the 20. He grabs his feet, gets brought down from behind, at about the 30-yard line, that's where they're going to place the ball. So Bishop McGinnis will have its first possession of the second half at the 30-yard line. Ten minutes and 20 seconds left in the third quarter. We'll see what kind of adjustments the Titans defensive group have, have made. Um, you know, a lot of again, a lot of people think there's a lot of screaming and hollering at halftime, and that don't. It, That's not it's the way it not works. Not that way. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of time on the board, a lot of time on on uh, with with a chalk, um, and again, we'll see. They have uh, man in motion left or right across the formation. River Warren takes the snap. He's going to hand off to Taffy. Taffy's going to cut across that inside. He gets hit there by number two. That's Caden Godot going to pick up about five to six on that carry. The ball goes up to the 36-yard line. They outnumbered us to yep. that side that time. Taffy gets the ball again. He's going to just pick his way through the middle, and he's got enough for the first down up to the 41-yard line. There again, we talked about that at halftime. It's not big chunk plays. It's just taking that six, five, whatever it takes. Taffy's a patient runner. He looks for that hole and just finds a spot and then jerks through it. Boom, he's off. Warren's going to reach back. He's going to pass this time. He's got a man downfield. Good oh, job. Great job there. 
by Caden Godot on the defense. If he could have got his other hand up there, but the other guy had a hold of his hand. Right. That was number two versus number two. And I think number two was one of the kids that got injured at the on that last play of the half, too, because he was limping a little bit right there. Great defense there by Caden Godot. Yeah, he had him right where he needed him. Right on his hip. One man wide to the left, two to the right. Man in motion, left or right across the formation. Hand off to Taffy. He's looking for a hole in the middle, and he's got it, and he's sprung out free. He's across the 40. You're not going to touch him. Nope. Touchdown, Bishop McGinnis. Well, now we're matching. Long runs. Yeah, matching long runs. Because that one was 59 yards. My goodness. Well, he didn't out, he didn't run us, outrun us to the sideline. No. That one was right up the middle, y'all. Yep. Bishop McGinnis goes back on top. 17 for the Titans in 20, and now 21. So it's 17 to 21. We'll be back with you here in just a moment on your Carl Albert Titan, Oklahoma Sports Network. We're back with you here on your Carl Albert Titan Oklahoma Sports Network. Your scoring recaps brought to you by Champion Plumbing. Don't settle for less. Call the champs. That one was 57 seconds, four plays, Coach. Tap, capped off there by a taffy 59-yard touchdown run. And Bishop McGinnis leads 21-17 to early in the third quarter. Well, I don't know if it, it would make that much difference, but uh, I see number 22 down here in a boot. And he's a, the Mike backer, and he's – Tough as they come, um, I, I, I just I hate it that he's not in there right now, and he can't be, of course. Right, touchback. Carl Albert will take it over at the twenty-yard line. Nine minutes and twenty-three seconds left here in the third quarter. Your third quarter sponsor, Bobby Lewis Insurance. Surprisingly great rates with two locations to serve you in Choctaw and Dell City. Well, back on offense. Here we go. Less than three minutes into the third quarter and uh, 14 points scored. Excuse me. Reed DeQuazy is going to hand off there to Xavier Robinson. He's looking for that left side and no go there. He's going to lose one yard back to the 19. Tackled by number 74, Vincent Shivers. Second down 11. 6'3", 245. Defensive end. Second down and 11 for the Titans. Two men split to the right. One man to the left. DeQuasey's going to keep it. He's going to cut across this left side and just pound forward to the 21. Two yards picked up. Going to bring up third and long for the Titans. Well, you know, we're running the ball, of course. Right. Um, but there's two safeties. Uh, are playing really close line of scrimmage. Yes, they like are. Like I said earlier, it's an eight-man box for them. They got five guys that, that are down pretty close to the line of scrimmage, and then they got three linebackers or three guys. And uh, they're showing really quick. Trips to the right, empty backfield for DeQuazy. Man in motion left to right across the formation. DeQuazy's going to drop back, reach out to the right. He's got a man out there. That's number six, and that ball was well defended there. That was a that was a good good thrown ball. Mm -hmm. Six had a chance. Twenty made a bid play. 
And that's what we've got to do. We've got that, to loosen them up a little bit. Absolutely. But, you know, we need to make we need to make that play. Tristan Haynes was the intended receiver. And this will be the first punt of the evening for either team. Trey Washington is back to do the kicking duties. And back deep are, are two guys you just don't want to kick to. Yeah. Number two there, uh, uh, that is uh, Tyler Bruner. Good That's punt. a beautiful punt. Gets up high. The coverage is going to be there. And there is a flag. He did, uh, he did hit him before the ball got there after he had. He didn't mean to. No, but it happened, and that's going to move the ball into Titan territory. You don't want to give the Irish a short field. But they will. Yeah, but that's, uh, that's what happened here. That's going to move the ball down to about the 46-yard line or the 44-yard line. So Bishop McGinnis, seven minutes and 48 seconds left here in the third quarter. Bishop McGinnis has the ball, first and 10, inside Titan territory at the 44. Hand off to Taffy again. Taffy's looking in the middle. He's just patient and running behind those blockers. And he's going to pick up about seven. Well, I was, I was just watching one guy that time, and, and he got turned out, one of our defensive tackles. He gets turned out. If he crosses face, he hits him right in the mouth. He didn't. Uh, and he will. Right. He will. The ball's to the 38-yard line. What's the rule? Never let him cross your face. Right, well. <laughs> That's what an offensive lineman's rule. Really. Yeah, that's right. It's not well, a defensive guy. No, but that's what I'm saying. That's yeah. why, yeah. They're going to go left. There it is. Taffy takes to that left side. He gets to the outside. He gets hit at the line of scrimmage. But it's enough for the uh, Irish first down. He's going to get the ball down to about the 34-yard line. He needed four. He got four. Taffy's going to come out of the game for this play. He looks fine. River Warren at quarterback all evening. Man split wide to the right, one, two men to the left. Warren's going to hand off right up the middle, and uh, he's going to get tackled. He's going to pick up about three yards on the play down to the 30-yard line. We're having a real hard get time getting off of blocks up inside. Um, I, I'm, I'm not sure, but uh, I'm betting, <laughs> and I hate to say this, but I'm betting that the Irish are just holding us. But yeah, you know, well, we need to be. I mean, we need to be able to get off block. Yeah, it's hard to get off block when somebody's holding you. Well, but still, second down and six to go for the Irish at the thirty-yard line. Thirty-three moves to the left side again. Man in motion, left to right. There we go. And they're going to go left, just like Coach said. He's going to. Oh. Eddie. He was out of bounds when he caught that ball. Thank goodness. Yeah. What a good catch, though. It was a good catch, but he was out of bounds, and he was out of bounds before the, the defender actually let up because the guy was running out of bounds. Yeah. Easton, Easton Harvest was st uh, stunned from the short side of the field that time and third, almost got him. Third down and six, two men to the left, one man to the right. Waiting on the play to come in from the sidelines. River Warren hands off right there in the middle. And that's not enough for the first down. It's going to bring up fourth down and about three. So the ball is going to be placed at the 27-yard line. Well, you're hollering at your defensive front to not jump off sides, thinking that they're going to try and mess with you. Um, I don't know what we're going to do. Let's see. Got Taffy back in the ball game. We're back into a four-man front. They've come in tight this time. Two men split to the left, one man wide to the right. River Warren is going to reach pass. back to pass. He's going to throw one across the left side. He's got a man, first and ten, and they knock him out of bounds over there. 
at about the 15-yard line. Good play on their part. Yep, they needed three, picked up 12. And the ball goes to the 15-yard line, first and 10 for the Irish. Warren's going to drop back to pass. He's got a Come receiver. Come on, somebody. Yeah, he just throws it out there to no man's land because uh, we actually were getting in the backfield that time. It took a while, but, yeah, yep. we did get to him eventually. Uh, he had to throw it in the dirt. This is the coming up the eighth play of the drive. Man in motion, right to left across the formation. Warren's going to hand it off to Taffy. Taffy cuts back to the middle, and he's going to pick up about three or four, leaning forward. So he goes from the 15 down to the 10, so he picks up five yards on the play. It's more than it looked like. It's going to bring up third down and five at the 10. And there is a whistle. Looking to see what's going on. It looks like they're making Taffy leave the field. And he is. Taffy's moving off the field. Four minutes and 41 seconds left here in the third. Yeah, I don't know what that's about. I don't either. Maybe he had some blood on his he arm. Or, had a, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it's football. Imagine that. that. That's right. River Warren claps twice trying to get the defense to jump. They check over. Five seconds left on the play clock. River Warren takes the ball. He's going to look for a pass, and they hit him in the backfield. Great job there by Caleb Cornell coming in from that right side. He only got off of him that time. That's, That's a good. loss of five on the play. Takes the ball back to the 15-yard line, brings up fourth and ten. And it looks like they're going to put their punting unit in. No, PAT. Or PAT, yeah. Field goal. Their field goal unit, yeah, in. Not their punting unit. Yeah. yeah. yeah and again, we, we, we say that there are three critical things here, snap, a hold, and a kick. That's right. And, uh, again, we have one of the premier blockers. He's coming off this side. He's got, oh, Went right that was under him. so close. That should, you know, and. For those of you who, who saw how close that was, that's what a, a good field goal group does. If you do it on time, you, you, can't, you can't get it. Right. And as good as he is, he, he didn't get it. He almost did, but yeah. he didn't. He was very close. Nice stretch out there. And so the Irish stretched the score out 24-17 to 17 now over – the Titans. We'll be back with you here in just a moment on your Carl Albert Titan Oklahoma Sports Network. We're back with you here on your Carl Albert Titan Oklahoma Sports Network where Bishop McGinnis has gone up 24-17 to now on the Carl Albert Titans with that field goal. And uh, that was a 20, and that was actually a 32-yard field goal. Uh, he kicked that from the 22, so a 32-yard field goal. And they're kicking off again to the Titans. We cannot have a three and out this time because the clock becomes our enemy. Three minutes and 36 seconds left here in the third quarter. Carl Albert will have their third possession of this half beginning at the 20-yard line. You know, I, we've talked and, and, and bragged on speed walk and, and the kickers all, all year long. We have a good kicking game. 
Yes. They have a really good kicking. Yes, game. they do. Yeah, when you can put it out of the end zone every time, yeah, that, that I mean, does it, make a difference. It's just amazing. And you were right. You were talking about the percentages of that 80-yard drive. Yeah. So, Reed DeQuazy in at quarterback. And there's an end around there, and that's uh, picked up quickly. He handed off to Robinson. Robinson pitched it back there uh, to Tayshawn James, and Tayshawn James was taken down all the way back at the 11-yard line. So a nine-yard loss brings up second and 19. And when you get behind the sticks, it's hard to make it up with a good defense. Well, and again, um, typical running down right there, and we were running, and they, they got penetration. Mm -hmm. 88's big old kid, sophomore, 6'5", 220, good-looking kid. Yeah, the only sophomore starting on this entire team. DeQuasey cuts up and gets about nine or ten of it back. He's going to pick up all nine yards of it, and it'll be third down and ten now. So that ball is back at the 20-yard line. They're, you know, they'll 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 play some type of a prevent, not a prevent, but a a, a coverage yeah, defense, right, um, right here, because you know we're throwing we're not throwing the ball as much as as we have in the past. Some two minutes and 19 seconds left in the third quarter, third and ten for the Titans. Trips to the left. Going to be a pitch out here to Xavier Robinson. He's going to try to make that corner, and he cuts back into the field, and he's got the first down. Great hard running there by Xavier Robinson, who saw the sideline, stuck a foot in the ground, and just went upfield. I'm telling you, that kid that, 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 came, that transferred in, number 30, yep. Bird, he was flying down the hill, and Trey cut right inside of him. Or X did. Sorry. X did, Xavier. The ball's at the 36-yard line, first and 10 for your Carl Albert Titans. That's a good linebacker right there. Yes, 30. he is. Two men to the right, one man to the left. DeQuazy takes the snap. He hands off to Robinson. Robinson gets across the line of scrimmage, falls forward for about three yards. Goes from the 36 up to the 39-yard line. He's going to bring up second and seven. Yeah. You know, we had a, a drill, a, a drill. It was a tackling drill called Shotgun Alley. And if 21 and 30 from McGinnis, 21 from us, 30 from them, were in Shotgun Alley, it, everybody in the world would be watching that. Mm -hmm. There would be some loud noises. <laughs> One man split wide to the right. One man to the left. Robinson in the backfield. DeQuazy's going to keep it. He cuts up field. He spins, and he's going to push forward. He's going to be about a yard shy. He's going to get up to the just outside the 45-yard line. That's a good spinner move by Reed. So we're going to say he's like at the 45 and a half, and it's going to be third and a half. Okay, here comes the, the oh, chess game, the big substitutions. They put him back at the 45-yard line. That is not where he dropped because that's right in front of me, and I can tell from where I'm standing right here because we're not, we're not 30 yards from the field. <laughs> they come up quick. This is a heavy set. Robinson is in the backfield. He's going to take the direct snap. He's going to go right, and he's got the first down. He falls forward for about three more. First to 10 for the Titans. You know, the good thing, one of the things about that formation is if he were to break the line of scrimmage. Yeah, there's nobody there. It's, it's 88 now at the gate. <laughs> yeah. He's gone. Yeah. But uh, they get, got down on his legs a little bit. and uh, But he got a first down. First and 10, ball at the 49-yard line. That's the end of the quarter. That's the end of the quarter. Deal. And so we're going to be back with you here in just a moment on your Carl Albert Titan Oklahoma Sports Network.
back with you here on your Carl Albert Titan Oklahoma Sports Network. The beginning of the fourth quarter in the Irish lead 24 to 17. I've got a couple of updated scores real quick. Uh, Ardmore's ahead of El Reno 15-14, and Noble is still ahead of Elgin 20-14. First and 10 for the Titans. Trips to the right. Robinson in the backfield. Hand off to Robinson. They've got this in, caught it off, and Robinson cuts back in. He's going to pick up six. So he's going to pound forward to about the 45-yard line. Tayshawn got a good crack block on that. Uh, he stood there and waited until the guy turned and faced him so it, it wouldn't be a, a penalty. And then he lowered the boom on the guy. Second down and four. Two men split to the left, one man to the right. Reed DeQuazy in at quarterback. He's going to pass it out there to that left side. He's got a little open room. First and ten for the Carl Albert Titans. That was Tayshawn. Tayshawn James with the catch and the run. And that moves the ball down to the 38-yard line. DeQuazy's pass to James. He's at eight yards and a Titan first down. That's just an easy pitch and catch I, out there. I was going to say, just that right there will back them off a little bit. Well, it has to, yeah. Unless you want it to just happen over and over. Well, and <laughs> <laughs> reminds me of a time. Yeah, yeah me too. <laughs> this time it's going to be a handoff to Robinson up the middle. He's got a little crease. And he's going to drag tacklers. And he's going to go down to the 30-yard line. Up, Eight yards picked up on a first down play. You like that because second and two gives you any option. Correct. Um, only thing I didn't like is, is he's kind of had that ball out there a little bit. And they, they're grabbing definitely for the ball. Absolutely. And, and what's crazy is they turned the ball over four times in the first half last week. That's right. And they haven't, they haven't even come close to turning it over. DeQuasey takes the ball. He drops back to pass. He's going to throw a fade down that right side. Oh, the big holding there. He he grabbed him right as he was coming up. And uh, I hate to say it, but Tristan Haynes comes up just a little bit, Gimpy. And, uh, yeah, he's, you know, and he, he didn't have to do that. The no. ball was so, so overthrown. Yeah. That if he if he hadn't have grabbed him, it, it, was, it would have been fine. I'm watching Tristan Haynes as he makes his way back. But that is a... Pass interference uh, penalty where he grabbed hold of the shirt there. So the ball is on a second down and two. The ball is going to go all the way down to the 15-yard line. And that's another Titan first down. We are in the red zone. The red zone is brought to you by Dynamite Driving LLC. We're dedicated to providing you a quality education and experience in order to better prepare you for success. Call 405-467-9121. DeQuazy across that left side. He gets knocked out of bounds down inside the five-yard line, I believe. We'll have to see where they mark it. We're going to see where they actually put the ball. But it looks like he was down to the five-yard line, just a quarterback keeper around that left side. First down. First and goal at the five. Yeah, you think we'd be in the heavy set. And I th think they started to put him in there, but they didn't. Ten minutes left in the fourth quarter. DeQuazy's in. DeQuazy's going to look. He's going to keep it himself. He busts through the middle. Touchdown. Touchdown. They, they oh. signal it? No, they're down to the one. Dang homers. Down to the half-yard line. It's going to bring up second and goal. They're putting in the big boys now. DeQuazy's going ahead and coming out. The way he runs, you would not think he's coming off an injury. No. This time they move up to the line quickly. It'll be a direct snap to Xavier Robinson. Everybody knows what's coming. It's whether you can stop it or not. Robinson falls forward Touchdown. into the end zone. Touchdown, Carl Albert. <laughs> so, Coach. Yes, sir. So, what do you do? 
You kick the extra point. Is there that what you you're go. wondering? That's right. It says yeah. nine no, nine twenty five left. Way too early to too be much making game. Way too early to be making decisions. Uh, plus we hadn't stopped them much yet. No. Now who'd have thought coming into this game it'd be a scoring fest? Uh I didn't. Oh my god. Ball gosh. is down on the ground. He's gonna have to pick it up. Dead. And that is the you know, we 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 talked about that over and over again. We and, about and, and we talked about it as the fact that uh, when you don't have the exact snapper, it, it is not the same. And uh, so the score after the point after try is no good. Bless his is heart. Carl Albert 23, Bishop McGinnis 24. We'll be back with you here in just a moment on your Carl Albert Titan Oklahoma Sports Network. Back with you on your Carl Albert Titan Oklahoma Sports Network. Your scoring recap is brought to you by Champion Plumbing. Don't settle for less. Call the champs. 13 plays, 6 minutes and 26 seconds, 80 yards, and the Titans score. And then a mishap there on the point after attempt. The Titans trail 23 to 24. That ball bounces high down there at the 10-yard lines, picked up, and they are going to pound him down at the 20. So Bishop McGinnis has not been stopped yet, and uh, except for halftime, mm -hmm. and uh, so we we need a stop. Carl Albert Titans need a stop. And the way that that McGinnis offense kind of it puts our our offense in a lull once we get off of or once we can uh, force them to turn the ball over. It's we need to stop. Yeah, we need to make sure we get them stopped. Good job. Taffy back in at running back. Man in motion left to right. Warren's going to take it off. Hand it to Taffy. Taffy's going to get the outside and jump out of bounds there. So he's going to go from the 22. And they're going to place that ball there at the 26-yard line. Four yards picked up on the play. Brings up second and six. We had a slant up front, and uh, Wilkerson uh, almost got him. Didn't quite, but almost. Hand off there to Taffy in the middle. He gets through the first line. He gets up to the 31-yard line. You know, I'd like to say that's nothing but an old trap play, and it is a trap play. Um, but, you know, again, we should be crossing a little bit more, and our linebackers need to be getting downhill a little bit more. They're looking at it right now. It's either, it's either third and very close. Measure it, and they're like. going to bring the chains in this time to look at it. And we're going to be looking at it with you. They're going to stretch those chains out and... It is a short. Uh, it's very short, just about three <laughs> inches short. So the ball is at the 31 yard line. The 32 was the yard to gain. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Now, now we're gonna measure it again. Oh, uh, actually there was- it to a hash. Yeah. Third and one. Be nice if we had a, a tackle for loss right here. Or then jump. 
I'm sure we'll we'll shift up front, uh, but they've been very disciplined tonight. So I don't I don't expect that'll that'll make any difference tonight. They're they're all seniors, right? Yes, they are. Yeah, they've, every they've one of them. They've been through this war before. Every one of them. They move in tight. Taffy's in the backfield. River Warren takes a snap, hands off to Taffy, and he gets through the line of scrimmage and almost breaks free. He's got plenty for the first down. He's going to move the ball up to the 39-yard line. Needed one, picked up eight, first down for the Irish. And they're moving quickly. Nope, now they're going to back up. Eight minutes and 41 seconds. Warren takes the ball, hands off to Taffy. You're going to see a lot of Taffy here. He is a hard runner, and he just keeps finding space. That ball goes from the 39 up to the 44-yard line. Five-yard picked up on the play, brings up second and five. You know, Coach, it, with the clock moving and him running and – you know, four or five yards of carry, you just you just want to let that run out, don't you, if you're Bishop McGinnis. Yep. They're going to be a handoff this time. Nope. Warren's going to keep it himself. He's going to pass out here in the flat to number 33. He's got it, and he's down the sidelines, knocked out of bounds there inside Titan territory at the 36-yard line. Good call on their part. Absolutely well-designed play. Really good call. Everything flowing to the right. One man sneaks out to the left. Actually, he was lined up on the other side. He drug all the way across. Uh, call a drag back or drag. Really good play call by them and execution. They're in a double tight set. They're going to run the ball now. He cuts up the middle, and he's going to pick up about five or six. He goes from the 36 down to the 31-yard line. Actually, the 32, so he only picks up four, brings up second down and six. Double back set there with River Warren. He's going to drop back to pass. He's going to flee, run out there to the right. He's going to keep it and go on the run. He gets out of bounds. Oh, my gosh. And there's flags coming out there. They're saying he hit him out of bounds. Their player comes out and wants to fight, but nothing happens there. So it looks like it's going to be a personal foul on the Titans. That's a sideline call. Yeah, that absolutely is a sideline call. And it's on that sideline. Sure, that's why it's called a sideline. Yeah, call. I know. So there was no gain on the play, but personal foul is going to take the ball from the 32 down to about the 17-yard line. First and 10 from the 17. 7.07 7 left in the fourth quarter. Titans still needing a stop. You know, even a field goal here would make a big difference. Yeah, it just means we'd have to go score a touchdown. Well, that's right. Warren hands off to Taffy to cross that right side. That time they did bottle him up. He still well, got gonna, a little better. We yeah, really did. He's still going to follow fall forward. It's a little chippy out there right now. It's getting that way. Yeah, and you can see the players. Cody's brother, Camden, is getting a little fired up. Yeah, yeah, Caden, Caden is a little, Caden, a little fired up. That's good. He's been – No he needs loss to. of a yard on the play. Moves the ball back to the 18-yard line, second and 11. <laughs> Taffy takes the ball. And he gets hit in the oh, backfield. God. Thank you. Looks like uh, – Looks like a, a major holding there on number 56. He actually tackled his man. <laughs> I think they've been doing it all night, but yeah. they finally called it. 
we're going to see here. Yep, that's what they're going to call. So that's so it's still the, second down. Yeah, it's still second down, but it'll be second down and 21 when we <laughs> resume play. Six minutes and 22 seconds. That brings up second down. So the ball goes back outside the 30-yard line to the 31. And Carl Albert is going to call their first timeout of the second half. We'll be back with you here in just a moment on your Carl Albert Titan Oklahoma Sports Network. Coast Technology Group is your full IT managed service provider, utilizing simple, reliable technology for your home and business. Remote monitoring and management, network infrastructure, and cybersecurity, all with 24-7, 365 day live support. When you partner with CTG, you get the 150 years combined experience of our experts, helping your business grow while keeping your systems We're back with you here on your Carl Albert Titan Oklahoma Sports Network. Second down and 21. Taffy in the backfield. Two men to the right, two men to the left. Warren takes the ball. He's going to drop back to pass. They're going to push him out of the pocket, and he's going to come up and run. He falls Coward. forward there. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> we all agreed during the break that we needed a turnover here. Yeah. And uh, Third so down and long. Third down and 15. You know, even if we can hold them to a field goal, I mean, we need to stop them right here. But if we can hold them to a field goal, that means all we have, I say Touch, all we have. Touchdown to. wins the game. Touchdown wins the ball game. Third down and 15. You know they you know they want to take points. So going for it on fourth down is not necessarily the wisest move. Warren drops back to pass. He's got a little pressure. He steps up. He's going to run. He's going to get to that right side, and he gets dropped down. Does he have enough for the first down is the question because now it's so. a difference. No, it's going to be fourth and about five, it looks like. At least five. The ball is going to go down to the 13-yard line, fourth down and five, and now the McGinnis coaches have a decision to make. They're going to do the same thing they did in the first half. Exactly. You're going to let, gonna let that down. clock run, get it down to four minutes and 40 seconds. And then they're going to call a timeout. Oh, no. They're going to try and get us to drop, jump off sides. Fourth down and six. Don't jump, boys. Yeah, now they're going to call a timeout. Now they're going to call the timeout. Bishop McGinnis calls their first timeout of the second half. We'll be back with you here in just a moment on your Carl Albert Titan Oklahoma Sports Network. Back with you here on your Carl Albert Titan Oklahoma Sports Network. Your fourth quarter sponsor is Cheap Sleep Furniture. This quarter sponsored by Cheap Sleep Furniture and Mattress in Midwest City. Mention okay. this broadcast and receive a free gift when you visit Cheap Sleep Furniture and Mattress. And they're going to go for it on fourth and six at the 13-yard line. Yeah. 
This is a very important play for the game. <laughs> That's an understatement. You think so? He's Warren drops back to pass. He's got some pressure, and he gets brought down. Great job. Wonderful job there. That was Caden Davis. Caden Davis. Coming up through the middle, dropping Warren all the way back at the 25-yard line. Well, now, and their coaches thought that they could, uh, their defense could stop us. We need to drive down to about the 15 or 20 and kick field goal with zero seconds left. We'll Ball. see if that happens. Ball's at the 26-yard line. <laughs> Carl Albert takes over on downs with four minutes and 31 seconds left. You know, one of the things you bring up there is <laughs> you want to score, but you don't want to score too fast. <laughs> That's what I said with zero seconds <laughs> exactly. left. Exactly. Reed DeQuazy in at quarterback, one man to the left, two to the right. Xavier Robinson in the backfield. Man in motion left to right across the formation. It's going to be a handoff, and then he's going to – looks like he's wanting to pass. He, he cuts did. back. He had him after a yep. while if he just hung on for just a second. Yeah, Trey Washington actually was going to break free, but there was too much uh, room. They're saying the ball is down, so number 55 coming out of there is – he's really happy, but it doesn't change anything. It's going to be second down and 10 at the 26-yard line, and Carl Albert lines up quickly. This time, DeQuasey's going to keep it himself. He looked like he was going to pass it, and he's just he going to push forward. Yeah, he's just going to push forward up to about the 31-yard line. So that's five yards picked up on the play. And that brings a, up third and five. Should have been a bubble, bubble screen to, to Tayshawn. Tayshawn wasn't looking. Tayshawn was blocking. At least that's what it looked like. Third and a long five for the Titans. Xavier Robinson in the backfield. DeQuasey's going to keep it, pitch it out there to Robinson across that left side. Robinson's going to drag forward. And he gets up for the first down. It looks like we're going to see where they place the ball. Yeah, he's got it. But it well. looks like it's at the 36. And that's a Titan first down. Three minutes and 17 seconds and counting. Our number 21 is pretty dang good. Coach. Yes, yes, he is. Pretty dang good. Trips to the right. DeQuasey takes the snap. He's looking over here to the left. He's going to throw it downfield. He's got a man, and he catches that ball. Beautiful catch down at the 23-yard line. Great job there. Tristan Haynes. Tristan Haynes. I think it may have knocked the breath out of him. Incredible too. catch, but he kept it. And yeah, they're just gonna they're gonna pull him off there. They're gonna resuscitate him and get him back in the game. Yep. What a great catch. And it was really good coverage. Great throw, great catch, really good coverage. We just came away with the ball. That was one of those you just drop in the basket. I mean that's yep. it. Right over the right over the shoulder, dropped in the basket. Trips to the left. Xavier Robinson in it at running back. Reed DeQuazy is going to take the ball. He, hand, he know he's going to keep it himself, and he cuts right up the middle, and he's going to get forward. The ball was down, and they're saying it was down. They called it down, plenty down. So he goes from the 23 up to the 17. Two minutes and 16 seconds left here on the clock. Six yards picked up on the play. Um, that was a good call for Carl Albert. Let's just say that. You don't normally get those whenever you're over here at McGinnis. I guess I can say that. I'm a homer. Yeah, you can. Yeah, it looked like he was actually in the process of falling. And There's a minute, 57 seconds left. This time DeQuazy's going to keep it himself across that right side. He's got to pull that ball in. And he's going to pick up about two, maybe three more yards. The ball is going to be placed at the 15-yard line. That's a two-yard pickup. And that brings up third down and two. And the heavy set comes back in. One minute and 33 seconds we really and need, counting. We really need to make this first down. 
and run the clock out. Yes. And kick field goal. Just <laughs> move up to the line. It's going to be a direct snap to Xavier Robinson. He's going to take that right side. He's going to oh, get to the outside. Goal. Ten, five, touchdown. Yes, Paul Albert. One minute and 12 seconds left on the clock. Carl Albert scores the touchdown. No flags on the field. Okay, coach. What do you do this time? Well, you you, you still have to kick, but you still have to kick. Yeah, it, it really doesn't matter, but just for practice sake. Well, 31 makes it a seven-point game. Right now, you've got a five-point game. So oh. a field goal doesn't do them any good. They're no, going to have to score. Going, we're going They're going to have to score a touchdown. Xavier Robinson comes in in the heavy set. He's going to drop back to pass. He's got a man, and they do it. Two-point conversion. Seven-point lead now for Carl Albert. That was a called a pop pass to number 16, Reed. He was a tight end lined up on the left side. X went up inside into the line and came back and popped it off over to him. He was wide open. So Carl Albert goes on top, 31 to 24. And there is one minute and 12 seconds left. And honestly, you know as well as I do, that's plenty of time. That's plenty of time. <laughs> you know, now it's when, when Coach Farley is, is biting his fingernail. Yeah, absolutely. He's getting ready to have a heart-to-heart -heart with that group. The scoring recap is brought to you by Champion Plumbing. Don't settle for less. Call the champs. That one was an eight, or a, yes, an eight-play drive, and that took up three minutes and 20 seconds for the touchdown, and then the two-point conversion to Xavier Robinson to Reed, and that brings the score, Carl Albert 31, and... The Bishop McGinnis Fighting Irish, 24. And we've got the we've got the younger kicker in now, Caleb Gonzalez. Yep, he's a freshman. He's got a little bit of breeze to his back, so let's see if he can long right. down to the from where the ball's. He's going to kick it deep over here onto this side, to about the 20. I hope. Gonzalez comes up. I was he, wrong. He kicks it to the left Again. side. Top bounce down to about the 11. That's number two. And he's going to cut up the field. And he's got some freedom. And there he goes running. You've got to knock him down. And so the ball gets up inside Titan territory at the 45-yard line. What was the time on the, on the clock? Uh, it was 1-12. Okay. 1-12. And the ball is in Titan territory. Defense needs to make a big play. Again, one of the disadvantages of not being able to kick it in the end zone. Yep. Defense has got to come up strong right here. Two men to the right, two men to the left. Taffy is in the backfield. River Warren takes the snap. He drops back to pass. He's going to throw it to the wide out there on the outside. Looks like a holding call in the backfield. That's Buttrick, and he's going to get taken down. There is a flag all the way back inside, inside McGinnis territory, and it looks like a holding, which would move them deep back because that is a spot foul. No, it's from the line of scrimmage. Is it the line? No. Yeah. I wish it were a spot foul right here. Me too. It may be, Coach. He's moving all the way back to here. Yeah. It yeah, is it a is a foul. spot foul. So it'll go back to the 38-yard line in McGinnis territory. Good for you. Good call. That brings up first down and about 25. Now you get into where it's 46 seconds and the clock is ticking. And River Warren's going to take the snap and drop back to pass. Let's see if we can get some pressure in there. Throw out here to Taffy. He gets the ball. He gets out of bounds at the 50-yard line. 
So from the 38 to the 50, he picks up 12. And that brings up second down and 15 with 36 seconds left on the clock. You know, one of the things about the double clap is on a run play, when they start the clock, you're burning time just in the double clap. This time River Warren takes the ball. He drops back to pass. He's got some pressure from the backside. Reach out, young man. He's still in bounds. Run the clock. The clock is continuing to He's run. Still in bounds. 26, 25, five seconds left. And McGinnis, call the McGinnis calls the timeout. The ball is going to be placed at the 46-yard line, and that's going to bring up third down and 11. They take a timeout. We're going to take a timeout with you on the Carl Albert Titan Oklahoma Sports Network. We're back with you here on your Carl Albert Titan Oklahoma Sports Network. 25 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Cheap Sleep Furniture is your fourth quarter sponsor. River Warren drops back to pass. He's looking long. He throws with all he's got. It's reached up and intercepted. Intercepted by Trey Washington. Trey Washington. And that, my friends, <laughs> you can put the ponies in the barn if you want to call that. Uh, victory formation is the best formation I ever. <laughs> there you go. I'm going down. Okay, victory formation for the Carl Albert Titans is what Coach Goff says we need. 17 seconds. <laughs> 17 seconds left on the clock, and the Carl Albert Titans have come in and stunned the Bishop McGinnis Fighting Irish. They were 6-0 and on the season, but no more. 6-1. and Hey, Tessa, is there any excitement down there at all? Yeah. What? I can't hear you. Hang on. There we I go. I was just going to say, I don't know that a Carl Albert sideline with that much excitement before. <laughs> and this is an away game. Yeah, that's right. So the Carl Albert Titans take the victory formation. If McGinnis wants to take one more timeout they can but they do not and their coach begins to come to the middle and the Carl Albert Titans have come to Pribble Stadium this evening on a beautiful night for football and have fought valiantly to the end. Reed DeQuazy comes in as the quarterback on the second possession and leads the Titans to a victory over the Bishop McGinnis fighting Irish. B Bishop McGinnis was a valiant foe this evening fighting hard all the way to the end, but when it came time, the Titans put up the numbers 31 to 24, and we'll go out of here with the victory. We're gonna come back with our post-game show brought to you by Rose State College in just a moment. We'll be back with you on your Carl Albert Titan Oklahoma Sports Network.
Here at Champion Plumbing, we grew up under these lights, so we know what hard work and dedication really means. Because to us, being the best is about helping our community when they need us most. It's about giving our all on every play and every job. Being your hometown champs means being part of a team that succeeds together. So every time you call, you get nothing but our best. And that's what makes us Champion Plumbing. Augusta Contracting is a general contracting company that specializes in commercial and industrial construction projects. When you choose us as a partner for a project, we assure quality workmanship, exceptional performance, and unparalleled client satisfaction. At Augusta Contracting, safety is top priority. Our main focus is to send our team home to their families safe, happy, and healthy. Augusta Contracting, where your idea turns to reality and your project comes to life. Carl Albert Titans have just defeated the Bishop McGinnis Fighting Irish 31 to 24 here at uh, Connolly Field at Pribble Stadium here at Bishop McGinnis High School. Uh, what a great night for football and what an absolute battle that went on. Just to give you the idea, Bishop McGinnis actually took the ball first in the first half and throughout the entire game they had seven possessions. One of those possessions was with 22 seconds left on the clock um, at the end of the first half. And so really nothing to be made of that. Carl Albert uh, had six possessions in the entire game. And uh, so there was a lot of scoring. There was a turnover on downs by Bishop McGinnis and one punt by uh, Carl Albert. Other than that, there was a score on every possession this evening. So two uh, incredible offenses going at each other and uh, the defense is fighting their way out. And the reason I say that is because just, just listen to this. 17 play drive, 10 play drive, 9 play drive, 13 play drive, halftime. Then when they came back from half, each team just sparred with each other. Uh, five plays, four plays, five plays. That was, a, that was a touchdown, a touchdown, and then a punt. And then they go back for the fourth quarter and begin the same routine over again. Ten plays, 13 plays, 11 plays, uh, seven plays with a two-point conversion. And when the Carl Albert defense needed to put it together, with a minute and 12 seconds left, the Bishop McGinnis Fighting Irish took the ball at the 38-yard line in Titan territory, got backed up to the 50, then got down, got, got to the 46, and they went for the long ball, and uh, it was intercepted there by Trey Washington, number seven. Uh, incredible job there by Trey to just uh, do what was necessary to get the ball and end the game. And uh, so they went into the victory formation, and the Carl Albert Titans come out with this victory. Um, as, we, as we are watching over here, we can see in the student section and the band, um, the Carl Albert Titans doing the alma mater with the Palm Squad and the flag runners. And uh, it, it's just an incredible sense of tradition here at Carl Albert High School. Uh, coaches in the background. And uh, everyone is here um, uh, celebrating the victory over the Bishop McGinnis Fighting Irish. Now, Bishop McGinnis came in 6-0 and on the year. And uh, Carl Albert, uh, obviously, with those two losses. And now they go 6-2 and and uh, actually kind of take the lead in District 5A2 with the gauntlet continuing to come. And uh, so next week, uh, Guthrie will be coming to Carl Albert. But let's not get too far ahead and... Uh, let's look and uh, see uh, what has been going on uh, this evening. We've got uh, a player of the game this evening. Our player of the game is brought to you by Mid Midwest Nutrition. For all your energy and nutritional needs, see Midwest Nutrition, the gathering place where friends 
become family. All right, as, uh, as the Titans make their way uh, through the crowd here, um, we're going to uh, uh, find our player of the game, and our player of the game this evening is none other uh, than Mr. Reed DeQuazy, uh quarterback uh, who came in uh, in the second possession this evening and uh, uh, began to, to work uh, diligently um, and uh, he's over here. He's over here talking to the uh, Jeff Harrison from the Midwest City Beacon right now, but he's making his way over um, uh, to Tessa uh, here in just a moment. And then uh, Coach Goff is going to have a few moments uh, uh, where he can talk to uh, Coach Dunn. So uh, here we are. We're just kind of just kind of in a holding pattern. I just have to tell you how beautiful a night it is here uh, at Pribble Stadium, and uh, it's always better uh, when you win. And uh, so uh, uh, I, I'm very, very excited. There were some some great plays tonight, and some uh, some what appeared to be knockout punches uh, given early when uh, Carl Alberts, uh, Xavier Robinson, went on 67-yard run uh, for a touchdown. Carl Albert goes up for the first time in, of the night, and uh, it looks like uh, just an incredible thing. It looks like we're going to go to Coach Dunn, and so if we can uh, go ahead and, and zoom on in down there to Coach Dunn, and uh, we're, we're waiting for you. Go ahead. All right, here we are with Coach Dunn, the victorious coach. Uh, congratulations on uh, another win over McGinnis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Always, always good to get a win, but even sweeter when it's uh, when it's those guys. They're a they're a heck of a ball club. You know, they we knew it'd be this kind of game. It is every single year, and it gets wilder and wilder every time. You know, so hats off to them, and uh, proud of our guys for for fighting for four quarters. Um, bringing in Reed, uh, what was your thinking behind that? Well, you know, we had talked all week about he was going to play. You know, we obviously knew that that was the case. We we had it set up to where we was going to come in third series, but after the first, you know, first series and our series, it was already in, you know, seven or eight minutes in the second quarter, or maybe even less than that. So, yeah, that. so we figured, hey, let's, we need to get him in now if we're going to get him in, and, and he came in, did a heck of a job. And, and we knew using his arms or his legs tonight, we knew that that was going to be a big part of our game plan. And, if we could get it churning, you know, and, and hats off to our offensive line. Holy moly, those guys uh, keep getting better and better every week. You know, our, our run game is pretty serious, and it gets even better when he's when he's back. Exactly. Um, is there anything that, that, that surprised you in the game tonight? No, not really. Um, it was kind of the, the dog fight that we thought it was. You just kind of knew it was going to be a dog fight. Yeah, right? I mean, obviously, I know that's pretty cliche. But uh, <laughs> no, I mean, really, I, I'm sitting here trying to think if there was anything that was surprising. But. You know, I, I don't think there, there really was. Well, great. Hey, I'm going to take it over there and let uh, Tessa interview Reed. Okay. See you, man. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. All Thank right. You. Our Carl Albert player of the game is Reed DeQuazy, brought to you by Midwest Nutrition. For all your energy and nutritional needs, see Midwest Nutrition, the gathering place where friends become family. Tessa, uh, you were down there with Reed DeQuazy. He's kind of got a smile on his face. <laughs> yeah. And so uh, what does he have to say for himself this evening? Yeah, I'm down here on the field with Reed DeQuazy. So, Reed, you've had one heck of a storyline this year for this season. You know, going in the first game, you get hurt, and then all this time and now you're back you have some great plays you're running the offense tell me what that's like for you what's going through your mind going into this game going into this game I was a little nervous just because I didn't a lot in practice but it was kind of just a week to make sure I knew everything and then going into this game we didn't really know like who was gonna get most of the reps and stuff but I was a little nervous at the start but you know you can't change it so you just gotta take a deep breath and play the game that's right and of course you had some great offensive plays um, but one that we were mostly impressed by was that bat down on defense What's going on in your mind as soon as it happens? You know, what are you thinking through? How did it feel to be on defense this week and to get a play like that? I give credit to the coaches. They repped us all week telling us what routes they were going to do, and they told us what to look for, and he curled, and they run the wheel behind it. Just got to stay in your back pedal and go cover it. Thank you so much, Reed. Back to you guys. All right. Congratulations, Reed. Uh, enjoy that uh, uh, that time, uh, that little look up here. And uh, uh, Reed, uh, number one, uh, he's just an incredible young man. And then uh, number two, he happens to be just an amazing athlete and incredible player. He's a team leader, and you can see that on the field. You can see that in the excitement of what goes on uh, when the when he, when he comes on the field and begins to play. Uh, what a great night. Um, 
Carl Albert uh, is still undefeated in district play. And so uh, Guthrie will be coming to Gary Rowe Stadium next week, and uh, we will take on the Guthrie Blue Jays and uh, begin uh, that process uh, of the second part of the gauntlet. And uh, we uh, are so excited to have you along uh, for this journey. Uh, Coach Goff is doing an incredible job here at, at, at explaining things and telling us things, and we're so excited to have him. Uh, Tessa Durrell, uh, just an incredible sideline reporter. I wish we could get her to talk just a little bit more, but um, we're always excited to have her when she is here uh, to be with us. Um, for Tyler Townsend, our producer, and for Keetra Frazier, our camera person, we give you thanks for being here and celebrating with us this beginning to fall break with the win over the Bishop McGinnis Fighting Irish. It has been a great night for football. It, the cool and crispness of the air is impressive to us. And as we go around week to week looking at these football fields and watching these players and seeing their families and watching the joy on the hearts of those that we understand live in a place of freedom where we can come out each week and simply play a game and see who wins. It's a great night. This is the Carl Albert football team, the home of champions. Good night and God bless. This is a presentation of the Oklahoma Sports Network. Any other use of this telecast or any pictures, descriptions, or accounts of the game without the Oklahoma Sports Network's consent is prohibited. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be used without express written consent. Thank <laughs> you.